Hey man, I low key feel like uh, Warrington is is like the Gotham City of Pensacola. Why you said that? I just feel like I'm in it Gotham. Do feel like that, dude. Like when you come I over here, it's like God, it do. I don't like anything can happen over here. Like right. it's just, I, don't, I don't know if I'm in a good part of Warrington or. Or maybe there is no good part of Warrington. Like when the paper, like like in um, you know how you have the tumbleweeds in the west. Yes. It seems like the paper, the paper, paper gonna be floating in the street at night. <laughs> yes, and you bro. don't know what character about to come out the alley or up the street. Real shit. Though. It's like I, that, bro. You can like you can die at any moment in Warrington, right. and it wasn't like there was no climax to get there. You just yeah, motherfucker, walk up. You like who who, and, who you, bro? It's a regular conversation. It's one way in and one way out. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then it's crazy because you can feel it when you, especially when you come over the bridge. Like once you come over that bridge, you come down that hill. You like. Man, this Gotham City, man. It is. It didn't need a it Batman really, need or something. Batman. You find, <laughs> wants to do need a superhero, don't it? I can really agree with that. That's crazy that you say that. That shit do feel like that. I never could put my man. finger on what it felt like over here, but it do. Every time I come over here, man, I'm like, man, something wrong with this side of town, man. I just, uh, yeah. but it's still Pensacola. But I, I do. I want to admit that I'm wrong, bro. I, I, I put on, uh, I don't know how many of these shows that you watched, but we had debates on homosexuality from time to time. Okay. So I'm, I'm losing this battle. Uh, you know, he has his opinion on it. I have my opinion on it. And I feel like I cape for uh, my homosexual brothers and sisters from time to time. But it's going wrong for me in my personal life, though, right? <laughs> so he say they're a bit extra. You feel me? So I always thought it would be cool if we had a, a, a guest that was openly gay on the show. You know what I'm saying? And one of the hardest things is, is we, you know, we sit on here, two black heterosexual males. We talk about, uh, you know, what we feel about women in relationships, women's business, gay business. And it would be dope when we have people on here who can give us contrasting views. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially from their point of view. So I bumped into this gay guy at work. You understand? Now, he tried to put me on a, a female friend of his, right? He gave me her number. That worked out fine. He put me on a little chick or whatever. But then she didn't want to be involved with me because I had something else going on. Fair game. No mm -hmm. big deal, right? right? But I thought to myself, well, let me ask him, since we now already made a little contact, let me see if he want to come on the show. So I sent this nigga a clip of the podcast. You know what I mean? I'm like, hey, man, check this out. If you want to be a part of it, we would love to have you on, man. I told him the kind of issues we discussed. <laughs> Everything like that, brother. Mm -hmm. You remember when you asked me if I fight a gay dude or not? Right. And I said I would. Right. But I won't, though. I let know tell you won't. why I won't fight I a gay dude. I already told you. I, I know you won't. Ain't I no can't. way you can. I told this man to watch the podcast, brother. This was this man's response to me, though. Let me, I, 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 and, and I had the screenshot it for you, dog. That man said, I watched the podcast really good. But like I... <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I wouldn't be able to be a guest. I see y'all and y'all little drinks and a few shots, and I be trying to suck your dick. Oh my god! <laughs> I, swear to god I, can't, I can't make this up though. Thanks though, good content. I keep watching. <laughs> In all my days, brother. <laughs> See, I'm trying to be. What I told you though, yeah. I said, bro, bro. and you, I, I'll never forget the look you gave, bro. You made me feel like the biggest fucking um, what's the word for the people that don't like? I, you made me feel like I was fucking super homophobic mm -hmm. yeah. when I'm talking about this shit. And I, I'm you looking at me, you like I'm just. Trying to figure out why you would like why it would bother you that much, right? And right. I'm thinking to myself, I'm almost frustrated internally, like, right. bro, I can't wait till one of these motherfuckers push up on him for real. Yeah, yeah. And I said it, I said, bro, you have to snip that shit in the bud because if you give them an inch, they gonna take a mile. This motherfucker came out the gates on you, bro. You feel me? Man. He was at the starting line and you thought man. shit was cool. Brother. And it's a cross country race, bro. And that man came out in a full sprint. That man didn't go. He went from. From a, a, a small minor comment comp, compliment that yeah. you was just like, all right, I'll brush that off. Right. To I'd suck your dick. That's what that man said. He brother. skipped from way over there to way over yeah. here, bro. They are he, shit. They, it happens extreme he, like that, bro. He could have so just said why, he couldn't come on the show. That's, that's all, all you have to say. But then after he go from I'm gonna suck your dick, he go back to good podcast though. I Keep have, doing what you do. <laughs> like, bro, how the fuck, bro? Like now I can't even. I can't. I can't even. Be around you no more. Right. I can't conversate Listen. with you. I really don't want to speak to you. Everything is almost, it's going to be infuriating at this point. See, this, Anything you say to me. This is the part where I'm at with, with this because, you know, I, 
I fancy myself a mature man at this point in stage in my life. Mm-hmm. Sticks right. and stones. You understand? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let these words bother me, brother. Mm-hmm. So when he texts me that, I was trying to figure out a response. But everything everything I typed started off incorrectly. Right. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, I, I, you need to chill the fuck. I'm like, nah, let me delete that. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want nothing to be. And I would still like him to come on the show. That's just the kind of energy I right, got. Right, right, like, right. I don't have to agree but, with and you. I can, get, but I can understand but, that, too, because yeah. it's like. It's a show, and we like we want the wild shit. We want the antics. Right. We want all that. That would have been hilarious. That would have been on the great show. on the show. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like I get it, and it's like when you're secure with your sexuality, bro, mm. you can get you like you you don't shit like that don't really bother you. You, don't. you feel me? But it's just the audacity, bro. But whole man, like what made you feel like you could say that to me? Man, man said, trying. Right. You feel me? And yeah. I say, and I say, and I said every time we talk about it, bro. What made him feel that way is that most men, when you make a slight compl- give a slight compliment like he gave, right. or say something slight to most men, most men go into homophobia mode. You feel me? And feel tried, and they say something right off rip. Right. But because you're cool and because you're mature, you feel felt. me? That can be mistaken for interest, or or or, or they feel like fuck, because bro. I, I, I hope that's not what he. Listen, bro. This was, this, I, this, I, this, these are the com- being these, are, these are the conversations that they have all the right. time, bro. The conversations they have all the time with women, and you hear women say it all the time. That's why gay gay dudes will call you gay with no evidence of you being gay. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you ain't have to be nowhere close to a man. No rumors or nothing. Yeah. They'll look at you and call you gay. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And 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 they tell women all the time, girl, I could flip him. That you can't. And, it, and it happens though, <laughs> but it happens because they'll say some little slick shit like right. that, and you you're being mature. Yeah, yeah, you're not interested. You're just being mature, and it's taken for the wrong thing. Yeah, the audacity. And now you they feel bet, like they can try you. Gay dude, better not ever tell a girl. Right. flip me. That's audacity. Yeah. Like you could. Like but you could I, gar- me I guarantee like, nah. you, he said that to somebody about you. No, nah, he didn't though. He has. No, nah, he did. Just like I told you, trust me on Listen. that, bro. Trust me on this. That's why he said that, bro. And, say, and you know what he said? Say, see, you know what he I said? Know, he didn't took it too far. I knew it. I knew not to tell him. This is what his conversation went like. This is exactly what his conversation went like. All right, let's see. Girl, you know what's the name that um, worked with me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that fine ass red nigga. <laughs> yeah, with the, yeah, right? All he, that's true so hold far. On, hold on, hold on, yeah. I wish all that's true yeah. so far. Girl, he keep asking me to come on this little podcast or whatever, and if he keep asking me to come on there, I'm gonna go. One time. Right, yeah. yeah. But but, but he, he gonna he say keep it. asking. Okay. He gonna mm-hmm. say keep asking. Everything is dramatic with okay. him. You feel me? He keep asking me to come on this little podcast, girl, and Lord knows. You feel me? The things I'm gonna do to him, I would do to him. And um, you know, I I done already complimented him before, told him, you know, you feel me? I yeah. can't be around you. You feel me? And I let it slide. And he and he ain't really like he ain't really, you feel me? Girl, I'ma get that. I can get it. I guarantee you I can. <laughs> I assure you, brother. All it take, and we I am I'm, I'm gonna get on that podcast. We're gonna have us a couple drinks, and he leaving with me. <laughs> Believe me, I'm gonna get that red nigga. You know how mad I'd be if that man start that room. Listen, man, I assure you, when he takes me there, brother, I had never had a softer dick in my life. You know the shit. <laughs> I promise you. You know the shit. You ever had so a peep? Softer. Yeah, you know what a peep is? The candy peep? Yeah. You know, you can squish that mother. That was what I had, though. My shit, whatever that's made out of. I assure you that that's what happened. But I just, as the facts change, so does my opinion, man. So I'm, I'm losing this uh, uh, gay. People are a bit extra debate we done had. So I, I'm losing right now. Yeah, so, man. Uh, and, and 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 like I say, bro, we live in a world where it's normal for them to try you. It's not as normal here and mm-hmm. in this location where we live. But that's why I say that shit is, is on 10 in Atlanta. The shit he did to you is mild compared to what may happen to you in Atlanta. You feel me? But I, when I lived in Atlanta, I never had that disrespect. And I've had men... But make how, they subtle passes. But you know how what many, I'm saying? But it wasn't openly disrespectful. That nigga went straight out the gate right, like, but, hey, bro, I can't drink around you because I'm going to want that dick. But, like, a, lot hey, of, hey, but a lot of your time in Atlanta was like in patches. Like you right. go for a couple of days, go for a week. You didn't live there for a long period of time. You feel me? Well, so I mean, for months, you know, because I was offshore. So a month right, on 30 right, days here, then right, 30 right. days on But a lot of that time was spent you and your girl, yeah, you yeah, doing yeah, shit. Yeah, you yeah, weren't absolutely. just out and mingling and in and, and a part of circles and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like when you get when you get a job out there, like if you had that job you got here out there, right. you would have been goddamn, they would have been trying to jack your dick at work. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Right, Long time ago. Yeah. Well, on, on, the, on that topic, I got a question too, though, because uh, can a heterosexual man take a bath? What you mean? Yeah. Like a, you, you can sit in the tub. 
Yeah, you, you took a bath. Yeah, you gotta be sore. You can't just get in there. Nah, I'm just saying. Nah, can you just like they gotta be Epsom salt involved? Yeah. Nah, I just want to take a bath, bro. Nah, bro, don't. I can't just sit in the water with a woman. No, nah, just, just and it better be a fucking garden tub. You can't sit in an apartment tub. <laughs> you get an apartment tub, bro. We ain't up. yeah, bro. You ain't gonna right. even look right. I mean, you know how stupid you look in an apartment tub. <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah, a girl told me that she, you know, her ex used to take baths. I was like, man, that man gay. I said, bro, I ain't took a bath. You I can't tell you the last time I took a bath. Man, you might want to throw like, some toys in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you in that bitch? You might want to throw some toys in there. Right. Play. Yeah. I say, folks, so you just come in there and he be in there. She be like, yeah. Sometimes he be holding both knees. I was like, man, get that. <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't even got a big tub. You no. got a regular tub. <laughs> well, faucet on your back. <laughs> that faucet better not touch your back. Bitch, you sitting in the tub taking a bath. Nah, you wild if you facing the faucet with your <laughs> that, that's throw. You know what's even more thorough than taking a bath by yourself in the apartment tub is trying to take a bath with your girlfriend in the apartment tub. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's wild in general. I don't but I have always been against that. I just just size wise, I've never I've been on like a vacation trying to get in that garden tub and it ain't work out too yeah. well for me. Like I ain't fitting right and nah, my bit, stomach poking yeah. out the bubbles. Like everything's supposed to be under the bubbles. Yeah, bubble. right, right. <laughs> it's just supposed to be my head and your head. I'm talking to you my whole gut up out the motherfucking yeah, boat. Yeah, you gotta like, be some thing. jets in that bitch. If ain't no jets on the tub, yeah, stand he, up. You ain't supposed to be yeah, in it. Go get in that yeah, shower for it. That shit for I'm your a, children. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shower darling. Uh, but 10 minutes in, man. Welcome to the Anxiety Issues Podcast. I'm Adam 12 Taylor here with my brother Boneface of Boneface Inc. And uh, you got a special guest with us today, man. Introduce your homes. Yeah, I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man, because he, he got a long list of accolades and things that he does and... I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you what he does. I want you to sell this shit like you sell that insurance. <laughs> right? Don't come in here being bashful. You feel me? So go ahead and tell folks who you is, man. Hey, man. Hey, appreciate everybody, you know, let me on. And uh, my name is Adante Ball. I'm originally from Pensacola, Florida, by way of Jacksonville. But I just came back Duval. to Pensacola. Um, you know, a couple of things behind my belt. I'm an author. I put out a book pretty much teaching people how to go from working for somebody to working for yourself. Um, I sell life insurance. I help people with investments, retirements. Things of that nature. So, I mean, I'm pretty yeah. much everything you need financially. Nothing wrong with that. He got that bag, ladies. And he got a beard. <laughs> you feel me? This yeah, my dog. Though, man. This, I watch him come up from, you know, he, he, yes, like I've been knowing him since he was a youngster. I watch him, like, transform his whole life. He even got me a policy, God damn it. You yeah, feel yeah, me? That's yeah. when I got my policy. I got it from him. Well, um, but, yeah, um, he's a jack of all trades, man. Um, s- super entrepreneur. Super good dude, you feel me? So I decided I was going to bring him on. We was chopping it up, and I was like, damn, bro, you, you'd be a good person to come on and, and kick it with us. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Yeah, so I invited him on, and here we are. I got a quick question for you, man, uh, because <clears throat> I was talking to a friend of mine about just, uh, you know, where people are in life. You get what I'm saying? Right. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of us, like me, I come from working parents. They're employee mindsets. You understand what I'm saying? So even at their best, they taught you to be a better employee at best. You understand what right, I'm saying? Definitely. So I always say, because I look at other families who have uh, maybe a grandfather or a father who maybe started a business or took the entrepreneurial route, right? Right. And that kind of gives you an entrepreneurial spirit as you go out into the world. You know what I mean? So did you have a mentor or was this something that you found on your own? Well, um, I, I say for me personally, I guess I guess me coming from Pensacola, the mentors that I looked up to was people like Boneface, mm-hmm. Roy Jones Jr. Those are people who I seen with money had the lifestyle that I, I was looking to obtain. Because I, I I grew up between Truman Arms and Escambia Arms, yeah. right on Truman Avenue. If you know what that's it, I mean mm-hmm. it ain't ain't a beautiful sight at all. So right, I ain't had right. no choice but to dream big and and, and and wanted to better my situation and my surroundings. Mm-hmm. But I say, um, pretty much, I mean, I mean. I had to really seek out. I, I, I started when I moved from Pensacola to D.C. That's when I started really noticing money. Right, right, cars, right. That big city clothes. life. Yeah. D.C. will show you that. Yeah, Georgetown was the first place I saw in D.C. That I was exactly like, man, I was what it. the yep. fuck? Yeah. Big money. Black George. people yeah. own it. Boy. Black people. I ain't never seen so many black people own it in my life. Yep, man. yep. And that right there was just putting it on me because I was just like, man, all right. Something you know, you know, mm-hmm. and my question I always ask was, what is these people doing that I, that I don't know about? Right, I right. need to go find that out, and I always seek the seek the knowledge. That was my thing. That's dope, man. Because I always said that I, I wish now uh, I, I'm becoming like a, a real heady person. I'm doing all this research and uh, understanding, and now I understand so many things. And now that it's time to create, you know, I look for mentorship. You know, what I'm saying like I mm-hmm. follow my brother here, like whether he know it or not. Like I kind of, you know. 
Secretly shadow on, ask a lot of questions, you know what I mean? Sometimes as a grown ass man, you be too shy to ask questions <laughs> like you don't know, hey, let me not ask this nigga, man. This sound weird, you know what I mean? So I just kinda watch him and you know, hopefully I can pick up some of his spirit. But uh I, I wish now looking back that I did have a mentor. I ain't wanna get into that right away, but you just went into, you know, all your accolades and things like that. So I was just curious to know if somebody showed you the way or was this just something you picked up from all your hustle and and cause that's dope, man. Yeah. You know, you know what the, the, the greatest mentor in the world though is failure. Definitely. Um, mm-hmm. And seeing and then trying and failing. That's the greatest mentor in the world because I fall on my face all the time now in this moment. You feel me? And a lot of people don't know it because I do everything in silence. I succeed in silence and I fail in silence. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel, I do both in silence because I understand that once you let people in your game room, they in there. They in there for the good and they in there for the bad. So I do everything in silence. But, yeah, just failing, bro. That's how I became everything I am. I didn't have a mentor. Failure was my mentor. Mm-hmm. You know, I just seen things. I was lucky to go and travel and see some shit, you know, and same thing he said. Um, that was a great way to break it down. I always look at <clears throat> who has the money, mm-hmm. and then I look at their level of intellect. You feel me? Ain't nothing like me seeing a dummy with some money. That's, that's nothing more motivational Motiv- than that. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I said, like, like, when you find out Floyd Mayweather can't even read, right? Why you ain't got right. two hundred? And, and it's no insult to him. It's just no, like, it's not. Well, shit, if it's he like can it, make it, it's like, like a blind it. man, fucking yeah. like finding his way through the airport. How can you not find your way and you got eyes? He's open game. You feel me? But don't even mention the. Blind I've man. seen that. I had the wildest situation with a blind listen, bro, man today. You wouldn't believe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you tell me. I'm gonna let, let you tell <laughs> yeah. me yours. But I was in the airport, bro, and I seen a blind man navigating his own way. No dog. No nothing. He feeling his way all the way through this fucking airport, bro. Right. You feel me? And I'm mm-hmm. looking at motherfuckers lost with eyes. Right. So that's what you look like failing, you feel me, while a dummy is making money. Right. How you know he was officially <clears throat> blind, though? No, bro. He was blind, bro. Like he had the raiding eyes? Bro, he had glasses on, bro. Yeah. And he was feeling he had the stick. He couldn't see shit, oh, okay, 12. Okay, 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 he couldn't you. see shit. Yeah, yeah. I, and I noticed by the way he was moving. Mm-hmm. Like he in an empty space. Yeah. Now if he got the he stick out, yeah, he had no, the stick out. I was, thought you were just he was just in I'm there. I'm like, man, why this man ain't got no dog, yeah. man? This I like this. Man, <laughs> listen, man. This man yeah. was like the Neo of blind people, bro. Like, you feel me? Yeah, bro. He was he giving directions. Man, I'm blind now. It's down there. Yeah, bro. Fuck. He like that. Yeah, exactly. Listen. And, and my mind is stupid, bro. This has nothing to do with nothing. He just said blind man today, and I had blocked this out of my mind, brother. I'm on the elevator today, brother. <laughs> I get in the elevator. I know this cat blind because he got the stick. Mm-hmm. Like, he big blind. He got the raiding eyes, you know, the ones that just can't see. Why you hate this right. man blind, brother? I get on the elevator. I press my little button going down to my floor. I say, man, that rain, <laughs> that rain picking up outside, ain't it? That man say, you talking to me? <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> That's how stupid I am, brother. Why that was so funny to me, I have no. Like he was supposed to know it was yeah, just you and him. Yeah, he's supposed to know it's just me. He didn't like, brother. I know you're blind, <clears throat> but you can feel how many yeah, people came in this elevator. How many people came in this elevator? Yeah, I bet you if I was blind, I could tell you how many people there was in the two by two box with me, brother. Yeah. It ain't that much room. Just, just man, to me. That man say you talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh man i'm a fucking idiot man but let's start on a current event man where y'all at with this man robert kelly i just want to know your personal feeling about the r man no nah, did you did you did you see that he say i'm finna I'm, he did pulling the nino brown that's what I that boy said i'm finna tell on everybody and i'm just sitting and waiting i'm finna, i got my popcorn in the microwave as we speak anybody in particular I, you think on deck uh let me see um let me see who I can think is on deck. Uh, hold on, hold on. Anybody who Usher might be on deck because they said they was fucking with the same girl in they song. Yeah, he, and she he, was probably thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? She might be I never, thirteen. I never thought about that. Usher yeah. need to cancel that though. Yeah, he that go back, yeah, you go back and got them pull your goddamn credits off that. Get all the money you made back off that song, cause boy, yeah, going to jail. Yeah. But I just I think I think it's gonna be a lot of fucking people. Yeah, bro, it just seems like we we in this fucking state where everything in this fucking world is falling apart, bro. Everything is falling apart, and I guarantee you, mark my words, by the end of October, bro, this shit is gonna be in full chaos. Same thing I tell y'all every podcast we talk about this type of shit. Go stack up on everything you can stack up on, bro, because it ain't going to be there. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna it ain't going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be, the, there's going to be 
um, a financial collapse. Everything is going to collapse with the banks and shit. Yeah, we like Everything we is going to fucking collapse with the food. Like mm-hmm. delivery trucks and shit are stuck everywhere. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. ain't no import, exports. None of that shit happening right now. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And it's by design. You feel me? All of this shit is by design, bro. This going to be a rough. By, the, by January, bro, a lot of us won't be here. And it's gonna be. It, it sounds crazy to say. You think it's gonna happen that fast? ASAP. This man swear he is ready for the apocalypse, man. <laughs> Mark my word. And we still shooting this podcast. I don't care what go down. We coming we, in here. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. My, my, my thing is yeah. this though, bro. I'm like how people, how they I'm gonna be like the motherfuckers see? on the Titanic. When that bitch sinking, we the band still it's playing. Right. Man. You feel me? Because it don't make no sense to panic and act like you can change nothing, bro. It's like mm-hmm. it, this shit is already too far gone, and it's almost like once the, the once you pull a pin on the grenade, bro, that bitch gonna explode. Right. Do what you may with your three, four seconds, but it's going to explode, bro. It's too late. Can't put the pin back in. The pin has already been pulled from the grenade, bro. Yeah. So all I can tell people, bro, is live your life to the fullest and survive as long as you can. I'm not looking to survive this shit. I'm looking to just live a few seconds longer than you. So do you are you able to? Can you still listen to his music? Are you able to still vibe to his music knowing, because I think, I want to speak for everybody, uh-huh. I think that we all agree that man is guilty. Right, right I, 100%. I, I don't, I don't yeah, 100%. really, right. So can you still listen to his music? I don't really think the music bothered me, to be honest. Like, right. I think I came up in a little time period where I was born in 92. Mm-hmm. So our kid was in his prime or, or, or creeping up on his prime when I was going, or coming up. So, I mean, I got too many life memories, and I ain't just finna because it man wanted to make some bad mistakes. His music ain't got nothing to do with what he did. Right, right. right. Oh, his music do kind of got something to do with what he did. Ah, yeah, yeah. But the right, right? Because like, like, you, yeah. if you if you really go back as an adult, when we were kids, we sung a lot of shit, and we seen a lot of shit we didn't understand. But yeah. if you go watch those same movies and listen to that same music as an adult, yeah. there's yeah. context clues that let you know this motherfucker is a fucking weirdo. Oh, he sung about If that you guy. listen yeah. to his music, you feel me? He all, Age ain't nothing but a number. Yeah, that was a hit right there. Right. Rapist music. Right on him. Rapist, mm-hmm. molester music. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you remind me of my Jeep and all. He all the seems, man had a show. Seems like you're ready. Twelve. Seems like you're. Li- seems like you're ready. Yeah. yeah nah, you I'm feel what I'm saying? That, man. <laughs> you feel me? It's like you don't comprehend all of this. Yeah. When you're younger, but, but, but as an adult, as a, but as an artist, you my make music. Was, I make music. Listen, my you son, make better music from experience. You so can. Everybody say he's right. so talented. Yo, he, okay. Yeah. Right. And you and you approved of his talent. Right. You feel me? Like my son was made. My older son was made the R. Kelly twelve play too. Too, boy, you feel what I'm saying? Right. So I feel it, but <clears throat> but I always in the back of my mind, bro. I'm a rapper, so I always understood lyrics and shit like that. Yeah. I always felt like everything he did was remedial. Like right. R. Kelly is not a great um, a great um, complex writer. He's not the Kendrick Lamar of R and B. He's more of the Little John of R and B. He's mm. more he's more of the um, not even Little John. I'm, I'm discrediting him too right. much. Yeah, Little John. Yeah, he's the um, that's low. He's the um, Give me a rapper that's great, bro. That's like not really that technical, but he's really good at that's, what he does. That's how I feel about J. Cole, but I know people will disagree with that. But J. Strong. Cole is still like um yeah. he's lyrical. I, but, still. but I get every, I get what you're saying. But my thing yeah, yeah, is yeah. like R. Like, Kelly is like he's talented, but there's but not ABC really like talent. nothing complex to what he There's is. nothing complex. If right. you listen to his lyrics, there are no clever metaphors. Right. There he says exactly what the fuck he right. means. I believe I can fly. Right. I believe I can touch the sky. Right. Yeah. You remind I me of my Jeep. Every night. I wanna ride it. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's really yeah. fucking yeah. remedial. Yeah, it is, you feel see. me? I could right. tell from the way he wrote songs that he couldn't write or read. Right. You I couldn't tell like, he couldn't read. Though. I could tell, bro. Yeah. Yeah, bro. That's that it. shit was like real. And that's why we cling to music like that because, bro, simple simplicity has always sold. Yeah. Well, no, absolutely. He don't make anything complicated. Yeah. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? He, it sounds good and I understand it. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's the difference between a lot of the music we make or a lot of music I make and a lot yeah. of other rappers is like, you got to listen to me. If you're having a conversation that my music is playing, you don't appreciate it. Right. You feel me? But if you having a, a conversation and Soldier Boy or somebody else who's like more on, on a on a um a simplistic level is playing, you hear everything they saying, and we can have this conversation. Facts. It's not hard to yeah. comprehend. But like he said, his memories were based on what he perceived 100%, at the time. A hundred percent. So should I have to erase that? Because no, yeah. no. Like it's like, bro, I can't I can't tell you something is great. And then find out the history of it and say, oh, no, it's no longer great. No, I already approved of it. I already said it was great. Right. I already gave you platinum plaques. I already said you was one of the greatest R&B artists of all time. Mm-hmm. I can't take that back because I found out that you committed a crime. 
Right. You feel what I'm saying? When you were committing the crimes in the music. Yeah, during the time. You feel me? Like, come on, bro. Like, I give you, you a different perspective, a way to look at it, though. I feel like you can't rock with him, and I and I and I debated. I waffled back but and forth. That's my. That's my. That was. I don't. That, right. that was me saying I understand him. Right. But me personally, no. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm the type of person. If you know me and know my takes and the way my brain works, like I don't. You know, his music is his music. What he did is what he did. I separate the music from the person. Yeah. But then I thought about the national anthem. Mm -hmm. You understand? Once you understand what the national anthem really means, as a black person, it wasn't for you. You mm -hmm. feel me? Right. The stanza was in it that said that it, there was no refuge for a runaway slave in the national anthem. Right? So just because you take that out, the, whoever wrote the song... That nigga wrote that shit. Yeah, he meant it that would shit. Not, yeah, he right. wrote that shit saying, fuck me. With this name for you. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. He couldn't stand me. Mm -hmm. So should I like that song, even though I know what the person Absolutely wrote it not. stood for? Absolutely yeah, not. That's how I, Absolutely I, that's not. How I made my decision. But what you cannot do, though, is that you can't go back and say, well, if, if you listen to it and say it was a great fucking, whoever wrote it is a great writer, you can't take that from them. You cannot right, fuck right, right. with it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you already approved that he, they were a great writer. You feel what I'm saying? So my thing is like, yeah, he's a great artist. But me personally, like, I stopped fucking with R. Kelly when I found out he was pissing on little girls. Right, mm -hmm. right. That I, so I ain't fuck with R. Kelly since then. I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, so you weren't going to hear me bumping no R. Kelly or saying R. Kelly was anything other than a fucking pedophile. Right. Once I found out you're a weirdo, I can't support you no more. Right. I'm not running your streams up. I don't give a fuck who get and the money. We all watch that tape. We right. all watch that child Absolutely. porn. Like, think about that. We it. passed around the child man, you porn. Had to, Everybody it was saw just that. something to marvel. Parents, like, bro, all our parents saw that motherfucker. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And I'm just like, bro, I'm watching this shit. Like, bro, this is an undeveloped woman, bro. He barely got titties. You feel me? I'm just like, bro, if this right. was my little sister, bro, I would want to fucking kill this man. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I like I stopped fucking with him even back then. Like I say, my, my kid was made on 12 Play 2. Right. You feel me? But after I found that out, I was like, bro, I'm done with him. And, and then like, here come a gay dude talking about me too. I'm like, listen, that man R. Kelly wild, but he come on. Man. Somebody said that. A gay dude said he was. I did not dude. see that, bro. Right. I said, man, unless you saying he did when you was 12, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah, he, ain't, he definitely don't want no grown boy, but nah, he don't want no grown exactly. woman. He definitely want no grown so boy, nah. pussy. I can't fuck with Kev. <laughs> but there's one thing he could have did that would have made me stream all of his shit. I wouldn't have cared what it was. What's that? Our, and that man had to plead, and he said, I plead guilty. But there's something that I <laughs> must confess. <laughs> listen, I would have I, I ain't do I, nothing man, wrong. I would have been outside with signs. That's <laughs> <laughs> my nigga. But a little <laughs> bump and grab. I would have been outside saying, this is my nigga, man. I don't care what he did. Like the Boondock episode. Right, because that's how you go out, brother. If you know it, it's over with. Man, man that yeah. man had the perfect man. out, man. Like the other dude that was saying man. in the course, like, what he said, I'm sorry, you uh. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> boy, that shit was hilarious, bro. You're having to get five more years, dumbass, boy. Man, if Kells had done that, bro, I'd have streamed everything he would have been hard for that. You a what? Legend. You, you seen the one they, uh, that the men going around where they say <laughs> he could be in jail and come and say a lot of time about, I want a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> they going to fuck, fuck with Holmes and that old man. It is another man. thing to say. Imagine being, imagine winning the, the prison talent cons, contest every year and you see R. Kelly yeah. come in. <laughs> you gonna be like, man, come on, man. I ain't gonna get that extra hour out on you the yard, man. Up. Yeah. You been getting the extra play, Over with. extra hour, play basketball, all that shit gone. Over with, dog. Kels from man, the, Kels Kels come, come, come up, man. Shit up, boy. You might well go ahead and goddamn figure out something else to do in here. Man, listen, dog. That shit and, funny and, as fuck, bro. And I got a little low-key problem with uh, Nikki. Nicki Minaj too, bro. Uh, Get to me. And and I and, and Nicki is, is, I think, in my opinion, the best female rapper ever. I know a lot of people debate that, but in my opinion, she is. Mm -hmm. She at least got to be top three, no matter how you look at she it. She up there, right? Yeah, Absolutely, up. can't argue that. Yeah. Uh, and especially like her influence now, when you see a lot of rappers and the most animals, influential. Oh, yeah, man, big yeah. facts, man. Nicki, that dog, man. Mm -hmm. Um, but the nigga she chose to marry, man. I, I mean, and I'm not. I hate to get into your personal life and all that shit like that, bro, bro. Like, what you got going on, man? I always say women are terrible at picking men. Mm -hmm. And this is the highest level of woman, and it still reigns true. Yeah. Like, bro, you know this nigga is in trouble for not registering to be a sex offender in California, right? Mm -hmm. Nah, I didn't know that. Right, so he refused, which is a crime. You got to register to be a sex offender. I don't know why he think that shit going to ever go away, though. You feel me? So the girl came out on TV that he uh, had the assault against, you feel me? Right. And told her story. Man, and... I, I wasn't there. 
But bro, unless she a trained actress, bro, that's that was rich. You know how you could tell when somebody bullshit on TV that fake cry, mm -hmm. that fake bullshit. Nah, that shit was coming from the heart, bro. Like whatever homie did to her, folk really did and that she shit. She want justice. She ain't talking about no man, money. Man, for real. Mm -hmm. Like you feel me? So for you to, for number one, for nigga to have a brother who was on the shit her brother was on. Mm -hmm. Then for you to back though oh, with man, the nigga. Yeah. That you dating It's like bro what, what you on I'm trying to figure out What you got going yeah, on man. Yeah. yeah like bro Like and then and But women are so And I'm gonna catch hell For this too though Women are so hypocritical though You feel me mm -hmm. I, can, I can agree with yeah, that But go ahead like, Right yeah, yeah. If this was a man On the other end Or something like that Fire his ass Boy mm -hmm. listen here Whole career finna be counsel Right But a woman You ain't got nothing to say That shit going on deaf ears though You mm -hmm. feel me so I just find that amazing too, like nigga, like, and I told you that shit. I believe some of that shit about going to the Met Gala had something to do with that too. But jokingly, that it was a Chuck E. Cheese in the area, but that was a joke. Sure, yeah, stupid as hell, <laughs> but that was man. a joke. But I just, you know, I just question Nikki, <clears throat> Nikki's decision to even fuck with Buddy. But man. when you, but when you look at the person though, man, I think we give these people too much credit, bro. Um, when you look at the person and you look at the makeup of the person, of course, yes, she is one of the greatest female rappers of all time. Mm -hmm. But when you break down the person itself. Outside of that, you ain't never done nothing to make me feel like you would make a good decision. Yeah, yeah, outside absolutely. of music, so absolutely. it's like I don't really expect a lot from people, bro. It's like we look at these athletes and these celebrities, bro, and we put them on these pedestals that they don't belong on. And when they let us down, we feel like they're not good people or we don't like them anymore. When they should have never been on that pedestal from the beginning. Right. Just like over the weekend, you had Andrew Wiggins looking like a fucking like a hero, saying that he wasn't gonna take the vaccine. Couple of days later, he like, well, I guess I, he took it, $40 and, million. and yeah, he just $40 like, million yeah, I either take. I either had to take it or I couldn't play in the NBA. Or woo -woo -woo. Well, you should have just took it from the fucking beginning. Yeah. You feel me? Because you knew that was going to be the consequence. You said that in your interview that like, don't worry about how much money I'm losing. That's on me. Right. So it's like the pressure of it made you fold. But I wasn't upset with him because I never put him up there from the beginning. But at the same, but isn't it okay to be? Skeptical because of lack of information. Like it's okay for somebody to be skeptical of the vaccine because we all have so much false information or lack of mm -hmm. information. Right. And then if you decide one way or another to change your mind or go ahead and take it, right. like what's what's the crime or what's the I don't understand like right. the but vitriol. The, but the but the pushback on him though is that his 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 stance on it didn't change. Yeah. He just got it because he was forced to get it because right. he wanted to make his money and he wanted to, you feel right. what I'm saying? So it's a little different than somebody saying, hold up, let me go check this shit out. Mm -hmm. Then I check it out and I'm like, all right, cool. I decided I'm going to take it. Right. But if I say I'm not doing this shit, I go do my research and say, I still don't agree with this shit. Yeah. And then I take it anyway. But my thing is that like he has that fucking right. Regardless of if he did his research or not, he yeah. has a right to fucking change his mind and do it. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. didn't ask you to put him on that pedestal. It's like the second we heard him say he's not taking that shit because he don't believe in it or he's not gonna do it. He don't he don't trust it. Right. You feel what I'm saying? It's immediately we take take him and put him up here like all right, he's our guy. But I think we did that because, and I don't think we did anything. I just think it was played out like that because. He stood the most to lose. It's easy for these average Joes to be like, I ain't fucking right. with it. Because most people ain't got yeah, shit right. to lose. A thousand percent. But with 40 M's on the line, it's like, all right, nigga, let's see. Right. But my, all right, you ain't going to take it. But yeah, but my, but just, you know. my stance on it is, though, bro, like, it's just like one of those things, bro. If you know you don't really want to fight, don't act like you want to fight. But he probably did, but... It, it's, it's one thing when you want to fight, but bro, sometimes you get it's to the right, ring and that nigga monster. Yeah, right, you right. Know? But that's why, that's why I'm it's, not putting you out on my campaign as the guy to fight for me. Okay. You feel me? So each, you, ind each individual should be standing on their own morals. Because the thing is, is like if I honestly believe that I'm, I don't trust that shit and I'm not gonna fuck with it, mm. I don't need a celebrity to come out and say they're not fucking with it to validate me. Right, I don't right, need right, them right. to stand up for me. I'm, I'm standing on my own motherfucking shit. Yeah, you feel me? And I'm gonna show you on my own that I'm not doing that shit no matter what. Right. I don't give a fuck what Andrew Wiggins does. I don't give a fuck what LeBron James does. I don't give a fuck yeah. what anybody does because I'm not going to put these guys on a pedestal and it makes me it, it, and because my thing is I like LeBron I'm not going to put LeBron in the position for me to dislike him right. you feel what I'm saying I'm not going to make you my fucking hero and then you let me down because you don't fucking know me and you ain't thinking about me you thinking about LeBron right. I got to think about me and what I want to do and how I'm going to cover and take care of myself no agreed yeah. before I respond I just want to know do you have a vaccine theory or I mean you don't have to discuss I know some people it's private but do you have a, a vaccine theory now, my, my whole thing with the vaccine is it ain't really that much it is, it's something we just, in, in 2018, we ain't know nothing about COVID-19. Mm. So it's like, how you going to put something out? You ain't even saw Asia 
So how are you going to try to get, put something in my body? And I'm the type of person, I, I'm teaching people how to go from working for somebody or from home. Mm-hmm. So I'm the type of person, and I ain't necessarily got to leave out the door. So how are you going to try to force something upon me when I ain't necessarily got to need to take it? Right, right, right. So that's my whole thing with it. I need, I need, I need, I need more track record. Because my whole thing, I, I, I was tell, I tell my mom about it. I, I told her, I said, you know, growing up, having to go to school, you got to get a shot record to go to school and stuff. Y'all ain't have enough uh, 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 enough years behind them shot records and all them things y'all putting in our bodies, to, you know, to 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 make me be like, okay, you know, put something else out. Mm-hmm. Let me go put it in. No, I need some research. Right, I'm right, old right. enough to you know to make that decision. So let me let me take the time and see if this, you know, how five years gonna pan out from now. Right, right, right. Where we gonna be at from there? That's my whole thing. And you people know. always say that. Yeah, you had to get shots for school and you had to do this. I'm like, motherfucker, I didn't have a decision in school. No choice at all. You feel me? My mama made that decision. Mm -hmm. And shame on her for not fucking investigating. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like not like we can go investigate and get all the info, but we can try a little bit. But everything that that, um, has humans behind comes from laziness. You feel Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A lot of us... Like our, like our parents are so lazy to where it's like they say, you got to get this shot and you got to do this. You feel me? To come to this school. Mm-hmm. And your mama say, your ass going to school. I don't give a damn what you got to do. You feel what I'm saying? They right. send you there and they let them folks do whatever the fuck because it's almost like because I don't want to do the work, I'm going to entrust somebody else with your, your you feel me, your well-being. Right. That's right. what happens. Like It's just like sending somebody to a babysitter. Like you... You don't know what kind of fucking person this is most of the time, but it's like you need you 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 in your own personal and a lot of us are trapped in these situations too because your mama got to go to work, your mama got to do certain things to provide for you. So it's like sometimes life leaves you in a situation where you don't have a choice. A lot of people have to go fucking work their jobs right, right. to survive. Mm-hmm. Like motherfucker, you dead either way. If you don't take the vaccine, you are gonna die of starvation. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you're not gonna have the money and you're gonna fucking be a, you gonna you gonna you, you it's a lose lose for so many fucking people. People. I'm just grateful that I'm in a position to where I can say fuck that vaccine right, and not have to take it. Right, but anybody know. that has to take it and does it, it's like I understand what you're doing. Yeah. R.I.P. But I understand what the fuck you gotta do. <laughs> you feel me? I understand it. Even like even when people say that, like, all right, cool. Like I got old people to live with me, and I got woo. I'm like, whatever the fuck your reason is for doing it, bro. You have that right. You feel what I'm saying? It's just my issue is just that, bro. Because I don't want to, don't shit on me. I'm not shitting on you because you did. Right. Don't shit on me because I don't. But I think that there's equal uh, uh, animosity on both sides. I think there's a there's especially in our culture, there's a lot of people saying that you're stupid for taking it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you mm-hmm. do take it. But what I will say, and I respect your opinion, and I respect your opinion on it. <clears throat> There's lack of research on both sides. Most people who saying there's not enough information on coronavirus ain't never did no research on it. You feel me? That's true. Most people saying that they don't uh, uh 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 that y'all don't know what's in the vaccine. Well, you don't know what's in the vaccine. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So a quick rundown, and I tell people this shit all the time, that coronavirus isn't anything new. You understand what I'm saying? There's a coronavirus, literally a coronavirus mm-hmm. lab in Wuhan. That's literally. So when they say we wonder where it came from, what the, what the fuck did it? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, like, but when you understand the dynamics of it, Dr. Fauci, you know what I mean, was able to allocate American dollars uh, to the millions, maybe billions of dollars, to this lab over there. You understand what I'm saying? So when something go wrong, nobody wants to take credit for an economic collapse. You understand? So there's a lot of information that they won't spill out because fault will be at play. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's just on coronavirus, mm-hmm. right? Gain of function research is what they did. Try to figure out how to make a pathogen stronger from passing from one species to the next species. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like how to make a common cold go from a human to a gorilla, so to speak. You get what I'm saying? Cool. And that's all this was. Something went wrong. And boom. Whatever. Okay. So, naturally, if you're working on a disease, you're probably working on a cure, right? Yeah, you got to. Right. That's why there's a patent. You see a patent. Now, I, now this is my theory as far as the patent-wise goes. That other shit I said is factual. You know, obviously, if you're working on a, 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 a disease, you probably are working on some type of cure. That's why there was a patent for coronavirus years ago. You get what I'm saying? So, I do understand that there are people out there who want... To know more information to feel comfortable. You understand what I'm saying? But most humans, bro, in the world are not researchable humans. We don't research and, and I get nothing. That, a, but listen, hold on. even in the food that we eat and the things that we do, mm-hmm. the clothes that we wear, most people are more comfortable the more people that do it. You can look at it as far as fashion. Somebody might step out on a limb and wear some skinny jeans or something at one point in time. Well, at a point, we was all wearing five X's. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And we thought that was lame. Then somebody else did it. Then the more people who did it, it made other people feel comfortable Absolutely. doing it. Absolutely. 
So I think that is the vaccine theory as far as because I'll admit I, I I took my first shot. Uh, what was that? Saturday. I took my first shot Saturday. Oh man, I, God I, damn, I'm in the game. man. <laughs> we gotta find another call. Now brother. listen, here's another thing. <laughs> I, I I took my first shot because I figured you know if we do turn into zombies, I'll be the leader. So it's really not no big deal for me. You hear mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I did it because LeBron James did it. And you know that's not my way of thinking. <laughs> this, this nigga look at me like that was the dumbest shit. <laughs> but listen, I didn't. I'm not one of those people. I don't follow athletes. I don't follow rappers. I don't follow. That shit means absolutely just because you can dribble, shoot, whatever. Don't tell me about my life, politics, nothing, nothing, relationships, nothing. But everything that we have against this vaccine to me is a con- con- like a conspiracy, right? Cool. I just looked at LeBron, and when he came out and said he had it, right? I said, they ain't trying to kill that nigga. They ain't trying to kill me. That's right. just, but I, I you, now what you're going to combat it with no, go ahead. is another conspiracy theory. What's the, what, what I'm going to combat you're gonna it You're going to say that he has enough money that they could give him one different than the one he gave nah, me. That, that's not what I'm going to say. What it, but whatever the case. So I just yeah, I got felt. I Which, listen, and y'all <laughs> might be right, mm-hmm. but y'all equally could be as wrong as you are right. Can I give you my theory? I'm going to let you get it, though. All right, cool, so all I said was is this, though. I said, I've done enough research. You, you heard me explain coronavirus. I've done a lot more in-depth research on just vaccines in general. You get what I'm saying? Why vaccines now are not the vaccines that kill off the disease from now the vaccines we have that tailor the symptoms of the disease. You know, right. At one point in time, vaccines will kill the disease. Then they transfer to vaccines that will lessen the symptoms because it was less harsh on our DNA. You feel mm-hmm. me? So I've done my research and I felt comfortable enough. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take it because it's equally as I don't know on both sides. Mm-hmm. So I would just say I would rather be on the side like, fuck it. You know, I, I'm going to be the leader of the zombies. LeBron will be my right hand man. You know, I know I can have a hell of a basketball team on the zombie squad. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And I'm going to rock out. All right. This is my theory, right? Mm-hmm. Peep me, dog. <laughs> it, it's super fucking simple, right? right? We do it all the time. All right, you got this this little fine tenderoni you fucking with. And <clears throat> I tell you, now, like you say, you can do research on both sides of everything. Mm-hmm. And I say, bro, I heard she got AIDS. I heard. I don't know. Right. I heard she got AIDS. I hate this analogy already. Go ahead. I know you do, but it makes sense. But it makes plenty of sense. Give me a minute. I'm going to let you finish. Yeah, okay, cool. I let you go all. I let you ride out. <laughs> bro, She got. I heard she got AIDS, bro. Right. Right? You know what you're going to tell me? What I'm, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> because you heard it from me. You, feel me. you ain't even going that way. You you not even, you. it's like, that's enough info. Even if, even if you don't, that's almost enough information for not even for you to try. And if you do, right. even, and, and if you do, you're going to be conscious to wear a rubber. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's what anybody I fuck with. But yeah, you're right. Right. But, but I can go get her check. If she fine enough, I'm going to go get that check. You will go get her check. Mm-hmm. But what you're not going to do is fuck first and get her Hell check. Hell no. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Right. So my thing is, that's why I say there's not there's not equal um, equal animosity on both sides. I think the vaccinated have more animosity than the unvaccinated. Because my thing is this, is that I'm somebody, and this is most people. Like, yeah, I might say I ain't fucking with that. Because the thing about it is when you ask somebody why they're doing something and why they're not doing something, they're usually going to give you a reason. Right. right? So when you ask an unvaccinated person to say why you don't go get the vaccine and they say, I don't trust that shit. Right. Right. Vaccinated people are offended. You feel me? But when but when a vaccine, Mm. listen, most of the time they are. Mm. Everybody that I had, but I have, because yeah, they feel yeah. because they feel like you're attacking their decision by saying I don't trust that shit. But and, 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 but, and but when you get attacking. vaccinated, like bro, as soon as I got vaccinated, literally a black girl in the store said, "Why you doing that?" But my thing is, I was like, "Bitch, you don't even know me, <laughs> right?" I, and, and I feel yeah. you. But th- there are some people like that. Yeah. I'm not saying there's no blowback, but I'm just saying it's not equal. Right, right. You feel me? It's just like. <clears throat> So so, and I'm gonna tell you why it's not equal, and why it makes sense that it's not equal. Well, it's the law of numbers is not equal. More people are vaccinated than unvaccinated. Right, but more. So. But I'm, I'm not even talking about who's yeah. vaccinated and who's not. I'm talking about the animosity of it, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because if we're in a classroom, just even on the elementary school school level, if we're in a classroom and somebody has a cold, you feel me? Everybody in there that doesn't have the cold that don't want to get sick, they're just like ew. Keep them the fuck away from me. You feel what I'm saying? But the one with the cold ain't really tripping. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So it's the same thing on that. It's like the people who have gotten the shot or it's almost like a thing. To, um, I'm trying to compare it to something. But anyway, the people who have gotten the shot, bro, 
are usually more aggressive in their stance on it. And when you say you don't have it, they're more offended. I'm not offended by somebody saying they got the shit. That's your fucking choice. Right. Just like when you said you got it, I'm like, that's your fucking choice. But when I say some shit like RIP, it (laughs) makes you feel like, like motherfucker, like. Because because that's why, but listen, (laughs) that's what I'm, but to me, it's, it's both sides. Just talking too much, period. The unvaccinated side spend more time saying, well, why I can't go here? Why I can't do this or why I can't do that? That's but, what you hear. Like, it's but, my but body, it, my but, choice type. But it should be, it should be, it should be just like any fucking thing else, though, but no, bro. No, 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 no. No, no, listen to it, me. Yeah, go ahead. It should be like anything else to where, like, we got this bottle of liquor. Right. Right? Me and you having drinks and we having a good time. Right. If he doesn't drink, he don't fucking drink. Yeah. So if we want to crack mm-hmm. jokes about him and being sober, that's fine. If you want to crack jokes on us about being drunks, right. that's fine. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It's yeah. cool either way. It, but it the is. thing about it is that there's no room for anybody to fucking be offended because it's a choice. But right. but, but what's the problem is that it's beca- it's going to a place to where it's not a fucking choice. Because people feel like it's being forced on you. But listen, It is. But listen, but that's freedom, though. If I own a business, people have to understand your freedoms cannot impede my freedoms, but they can disagree with my freedoms. You understand what I'm saying? So if I own a business, you understand what I'm saying? In my business, I feel like you need to be vaccinated to come in here. That is my freedom. That's perfectly fine. Correct. That's perfectly fine. Right. And you have the right to say, well, I don't want to work here anymore. That's perfectly fine. fine too. And it's not my fault that if you go down the street and around the corner, all of them also saying that. It's not your fault. But so now people are faced to the reality, but now I don't have no where to work. Now I don't have nowhere to hang out. Now I can't travel. Well, and you don't I, own no airlines. You don't own no clubs. You don't that, own no shit. Listen. So, but if you wait long enough, I mean, there'd be some unvaccinated people who start clubs and businesses and see a need for, uh, you know, some shit like right. that. Right, right. But, 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 on, but on the flip side yeah. of that, though, right, and this is why I have the issue with it, that the issue with it is um, this, right? Um, a lot of these situations aren't these businesses' fucking choice to do this. This is a thing now to where they're, the government is requiring you to yeah. have people be vaccinated to work for you. Yeah, that's not fair. It's not. The it's not because, because 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 we now, empower them to do a lot of shit. It's not fair. I understand that, bro. But at the end of the day, dog, if if I create this, this is my shit. This is my investment. You feel me? Just like this person should be able to say, you have to be able to va- you yeah. have to be vaccinated va- vaccinated to come in here. I have I have the right to be able to say. I don't want. I don't want to require that. I, I get so my thing is, and even outside of that realm, mm-hmm. even outside of that realm, it's going. It's becoming a thing to be a mandate that you have to get it, regardless of what the fuck you want to work or if you want to do anything. Right, right, That's right. a fucking problem. Right. And, and 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 what people don't understand is this, bro. If it was really a thing to where it was a choice and you had the right to choose, and people stood and said, "Well, fuck, fuck your store, fuck your airlines." Guess what? Those airlines would change their fucking rules before those people change because you need people to fly, you yeah. need people to work. You feel me? So it's like it's like we need each other, bro. No, absolutely, we need each other. So absolutely. let's not act like let's not act like these stores are gonna work without people and these airlines are gonna work without people. Right. But people are so fucking scared and so fucking afraid to stand on something yeah. that. You, feel that, me? you can make them do whatever. That's called leverage, and, yeah. and, and they always gonna have it as long as we vote them, vote the way we vote, and give them the power. And, 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 and it don't matter who you vote because the thing about it, bro, you said this in the black tax, bro. It don't matter who's in fucking power. Right. It don't matter who people vote for. You feel me? If we stick together as a unit and we make a decision to stand on something, they have to change their policies. Right. We got the leverage. Yeah, absolutely. Businesses don't have leverage. Airlines don't have leverage. Look None how, of that shit has leverage. Look how hypo- people have leverage. Look how hypocritical. Uh, po- politics are right. So you have someone like conservatives who want who uh or uh anti-abortion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No abortion, right? It's not your body, your choice, right? But they want you to get vaccinated. That's what? crazy. It don't so that's what I'm right. That, that's my so point. Wait, wait a minute. I can't have an abortion, but I have to get vaccinated. So it's just politics are just. How I feel, bro. Right. Agree mm-hmm. with me. That's all it is. And if I disagree, then that's all politics. I said all the time. And this vaccine is, as long as you right. agree with me. And the vaccine is becoming a political stance. I mean, that's just that's just literally what it is. I'm not scared about it because there has been nothing in our history outside of this in a long time that has been forced upon you. Mm. You you don't have a fucking choice. Name something. In our lifetime. Yeah, in our lifetime, well, something yeah, that you were lifetime. forced to do. Yeah, but this is our. This you don't have a choice. Yeah, this is history for us and our generation. You know, mm-hmm. we, we you living in a moment in time that they right. talk about. Uh, so, so uh, my thing is that why is that should be alarming? But but there's nothing that humans haven't went through before. I'm I, sure initial vaccines, yellow I get, fever, I get, mumps, I get, measles. I get, I'm sure all of that I shit get, was my. Listen, you know, I get all yeah. of that. 
But in our lifetime, yeah. church and school segregation, like right. all of that shit was forced up on. Bro, we, we, even on a simple simple scale as a relationship, bro, mm-hmm. you and your girl have been together ten years. She been moving a certain type of way for ten years, and she start moving different. Right, alarms go off. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. You've never come in at two thirty a.m. Yeah. You've never come in at six a.m. Something is up. Yeah, no, I agree. And you're not gonna be able to convince me that it's not. We're just in the so changing. so. And, and what's crazy is because yeah. we had this conversation when you was talking about how you asked your girl about the girl, mm-hmm. and she went off on you like you was tripping. Right. When something was clearly off. Mm-hmm. So my thing is like that's how people are with these vaccines. Like, bro, we've never been forced to do anything. I'm alarmed, highly alarmed, because I've never had to experience this. Not saying that they're right or wrong, but, bro, you have a right to be alarmed. It makes sense to be alarmed. So for the government to tell us, shut the fuck up and take it, it's like your girl telling you, bro, ain't nothing going on. Shut the fuck up. My patterns ain't off. And you're right. like, they're clearly off. But that's one of the illusions of America. Uh, it's the illusion of freedom. Like, you're not necessarily We never had freedom. freedom. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I no. think for the first time in a long, long time, people are seeing the truth about Freedom. Yeah, freedom. You've like never you're, had you're, it in the first place. Exactly. So we've always done a good job of just making you feel free. Making I agree you feel with that like a thousand percent. Sky's the limit, but you know, the limit was the sky. Right, but yeah. that's why that shit doesn't yeah. bother me really, bro, because at the end of the day, I understood, bro, that like you've never fucking been free. When you if you got a social security number, motherfucker, you're not free. Right. That's a serial yeah. number. That's that's your product. Yeah. You're a product of the US government. When you get that number and they assign you that number, bro, you are a number. Just like in jail, when you go to jail, what you get? A number. A number. Yeah. I'm sure I got a barcode in my arm right now. I'm sure that bro, was in my like, vaccine, yeah. some kind so, of liquid. So, so that's uh, why and that's why when you when you when when you have children, mm-hmm. that's why they hate like um midwives and they hate home births and shit. You feel me? Because yeah. they lose control of what's going on. Yeah. And there and there are people that and, and all of this is coming to an end too, but there are groups of people that understand and know how to finagle past shit to where they aren't government property. Right. And when a when a cop pull you over, you can pull out a certain card and they know that card. They glad that nobody else else fucking other than you knows that card. It's a very few of you. Right. But it's just like bikers, bro. There are certain biker groups <laughs> that where if the cops fuck with them, they flash something and it's like, all right, cool. I'm, you out of my jurisdiction. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's jurisdiction for people. Yeah. You feel yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. And 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 that is being erased for everybody. And those are the people who are fucking most uncomfortable. Yeah. The people that understand the loopholes and understand how things work behind the scenes. You regular motherfuckers ain't got nothing to be fucking worried about because you've been slaves. Yeah. You've been under control. You feel me? <laughs> you 97% it's motherfuckers. Up, but true. 97% of us have always been controlled. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So what it is is that it's like, bro, we're approaching a space, bro, to where everything is about to re- be reset, bro. And what what people don't understand is that there was always um, something they used us to control us. Just like we use Santa Claus to control our kids and we use the tooth fairy and all these other things to make our children behave. The government does that on a higher level. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, we our, 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 our behavior system was religion. That was the thing that kept us in place. That was the thing that stopped them from having to come down and show us their real power. Right. You feel me? Like, right. motherfucker, I'm going to scare you with God. I'm going to scare you with religion and all these different things. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to control religion. Not saying that any other thing that God doesn't exist or anything like that. What I'm saying is that I can take God and make God whatever the fuck I want to make God. It happens yeah. all the time. You feel time. what I'm saying? Right. If, if you watch slave movies, bro, they use God to fucking justify everything they did. Yeah. It's, I forgot what movie. He was reading the Bible while whipping While whipping your ass. Yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Granny said the cracker beat up, beat up, um, beat up while reading script. You feel what I'm saying? That's in the song. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like... um. Bro, they control God, they control everything. And it's just like once the things they're using become dated and it's not working anymore, people are going further away from religion. People are finding other belief systems. People are are going further away from a lot of shit that was used to control people. And now we're in chaos. If you watch, um, like people do shit with no remorse now. Shit that we used to be embarrassed of or shit that we felt like, damn, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to, like, I don't want karma from that. We don't even give a fuck about karma anymore. Karma anymore. So we get into a space to where they can't control us, bro. So they have to do something different we have to bring in a new system usher in a new system and this new system can't be as fucking docile and nice as the last system right. this new system is authoritarianism so it's like it's like these motherfuckers are basically coming in and they're going to take control of everything 
You feel but what I'm saying? But Dr. Umar, I love you, boy. Man, they about, listen, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. They about to take over. They about to come in with the muscle this time, motherfucker. Like, the mm-hmm. illusion of freedom is, this was the last place to have the illusion of freedom. Bro, I've been to Australia. Doesn't exist. I've been to China. Doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. I, you feel me? I've you been can't. all over the that, fucking that, world. It doesn't that, exist. No, it doesn't. The, we are the last place to think we're free. Yeah. That's why they say land of the free, home of the brave. Mm-hmm. Bitch, we've never been free. Black people, especially. especially. You feel me? So to think that you had any rights, motherfucker, you ain't even got the rights that you've been fighting from for from the beginning. Right. You ain't even got them yet. Yeah. So what the fuck made you think you was free? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this country was not designed with you in mind, bro. No, no, not at all. You feel what I'm you, saying? So you live in a place where they say they couldn't have gave you reparations. We can't afford it. Then they gave everybody money when the pandemic happened. You everybody know, got everybody money. Got yeah. Whites everybody get got money. Shit. Everybody get money. You feel yeah, me? I thought so, we was broke. Yeah, so bro, we like. But, but right. And they new, say they're running out of money now. But by this the way, new system we that we this, to, uh, this new system that's coming in, right? And this new system that's coming into play, bro, is for. Everybody, right? It's a new world yeah. order, not they, a new country man, they order. They taxing cash app, Zelle, everything. Listen, you about bro. to get uh, what they call them? Uh, what's the name of them forms you get when you pay taxes? What they call w- them? Two, t- no, 10, 10, 10, 10, um, 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Till I ain't no entrepreneur, yeah. I don't. <laughs> and what you gonna what you gonna learn, bro? Is that yeah. it's like we we move into a space. Now mark my words, we move into a space to where you won't be able to own anything privately. Right? You feel me? You won't be able to build anything. Mm-hmm. Everything is gonna be owned by the system, and everything is gonna be fucking monitored and rationed. You feel me? Nobody's going to be able to be richer than anybody. That's why these moguls are so fucking upset. You feel me? And that's why, like, so when you said LeBron got, James got the shot, bro, we're moving to a place to where they don't give a fuck about LeBron James. No, I, I know they don't. And, and I, she, just, and I she, just said they ain't going to kill him. Yeah. No, they no, kill no, they'll kill him too. And I'm going to tell they you why. When you look at, um, when I when I went to China, bro, mm-hmm. and I'm like, like, when you, when, when Yao Ming came over here to play, right. Like he had to get permission from his country. Yeah, no, they own him. Yeah, that's how they living. Though. Yeah, right. They yeah, living. Yeah, they yeah. living like that. But yeah. but that system is something. That, that but, like, but y'all still good over there. Like if you go over there, I'm sure his life ain't bad. He don't look like no, a slave. No, if you go visit. No, his him life right ain't now. bad. But he'll never be able to have the life LeBron James has here. Yeah, I mean, I it's guess not it's gonna happen. I'm sure it's a bunch of little bit. It's just like anything right else. Now. It's just like anything else. When you think about slavery, right? And you think about the Mandingos. Mm-hmm. They live better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yep. Agree. But yeah. You still don't own shit. You still not free. Right. Like this system still owns you. You feel me? If you whoop some ass today, you can go get some pussy and have some drinks. Nobody else gonna be able to do that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like the reward system of being a house nigga or a mandingo was higher than being in the field. Right. But ninety percent of the slaves were in the Listen, field. But have no fear, brother. You live in America. When I say have no fear, we're the most spoiled country ever, right? right. We can't go to that system peacefully. No, not it's blacks. not going peacefully. Not even black. It's not. Whites can't go to that. They gonna cut the fuck up, brother. Right. If you think whites not used to being told what to do, it's gonna be mm-hmm. cal- if there's any point in time for us to take over, it's when they implement the but, system. But I'm gonna tell you because we used to certain uh, type of circumstances that they. You want me to tell you why we fucked though? Uh, who? who uh, humans. 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 Okay, gotcha. I'm gonna tell you why humans are fucked. There was a time to where war meant the people versus the people on the ground, boots on the ground. You feel me? To where if it was more of us than you, yeah, was, we can fuck you up. But it's different now, bro. Just like, bro, just like they made this fucking coronavirus, bro. They got some shit at a button. Like, all you motherfuckers, all y'all tough. Let me cut this air off real quick. Yeah, yeah no You doubt. feel what I'm saying? Let me yeah. shut that down. Yeah. Can you breathe? Are you ready to act right? Yeah. Okay, I'll turn it back on. You feel what I'm saying? That's and right. they, and I'm telling you, bro, like China is the... um. The leading horse in this race. Their system. Listen to me. Listen, listen, yeah, hold on, listen to me. Listen to me. Yeah. And, and 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 I don't mean China as like as far as the power. What I'm saying is that the system that they've been practicing and implementing is the system that the rest of the world is adopting. You right. feel what I'm saying? People are property. People don't own anything. People don't have any power. You feel me? Mm-hmm. The po- the elite have the powers. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you another thing that I, I what what's my another one of my theories. I'm gonna give you another conspiracy theory. I feel like this. Uh, when you look at the world, they say that the world is overpopulated, right? And what 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 I think they want to happen is they want to kill off a large percent of the population, huge percent. I was um, listening to this um, this fucking um, guy who's um, a, a conspiracy theorist, but also a, um, he's like a scientist or some shit, and he's worked for the government before. But he said that these people want to kill thirteen of fourteen people. You feel me? 13 out of 14 people across the world. And he said, it's not going to happen for the same reason you say. He said, people 
are have more information now and they're going to rebel. So it's, they're not going to go so quietly. So it's not going to happen as fast as they wanted it to happen. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But it's going to happen eventually, but just not as fast. And they've been doing that. Right. Like but cancer. he said, so he was just like, maybe it'll be 10 or 14 now. You feel what I'm saying? But the reason why they want to do this is because the elite want to take, just like um, we've had domination in history to where like um, a certain group take this colony and a certain group take this colony. You feel me? Like Europeans came over here and fucking snatched up America yeah. and made it their own thing over time. These same people, want these elite people want to take patches of shit. I got this, you got this, I got this. Right. And the only way you can do that is to eliminate the people. And then you populate that shit with your own, you feel me? Like you start so new societies. Like Bill Gates and them want to own their little Jeff right. Bezos. Right. Like let me, let me Africa. Get, right, let me get Florida. Yeah. You feel me? Bill Gates might get California. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Jeff Bezos might get Georgia. You feel me? And it's just like you you take these patches and you fucking build your own societies in them. It's like, well, they, that, but that's how yeah. this civilization yeah. started. They're it was a few playing, motherfuckers playing that Sims. came. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So it's Sims. Yeah, yeah. that yeah, absolutely. They uh, live in real time. life. Yeah, they live in Sims. real life. Sims. So oh, that's, that's so it's yeah. just like yeah. that's the way it's working. Right. But it's just like in order to do that, we got to clear the board. <laughs> we need a reset because it's like, bro, we we like, bro. There was a time to where even when like when shit was. Um, I ain't gonna never say organized because shit was never really organized. But when shit was like um, Mayberry, you feel what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. together it was just like everybody was like on one accord. Everybody believed in the same things. Everybody had the same values and shit worked a certain way. But like the value system is all over the fucking place now. Mm -hmm. You feel what all I'm right. saying? And, and it's like, bro, there's so many. When you look at this world, bro, from a dictator's perspective or from an elite perspective, mm -hmm. they looking at us like, fucking like trash like bro and they look at us as numbers they don't look at us as individuals with feelings and all that shit you feel me it's just like these numbers what's what's a threat what's not what can we keep what can we salvage and what can we throw out no, and a lot of us gonna get thrown out yeah and, and i know the elites definitely have a, uh, a, a different perspective than we do they live a different life than we do but speaking of elites and then i have some questions for you but y'all let me know how y'all feel about this about this speaking of elites uh, you can tell when tequila kick in, I start having a little lisp from here and there. So you can just tell. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. But, yeah. um, LeBron ain't take the shot, bro. But go ahead. The LeBron took the shot. I'm going to tell you why he didn't take it. You can't have it both ways. No, I'm going to tell you. Either they don't care about him and he took the shot, or they care no, about no, him enough I, to say, what, go no, out there and tell no, these this, niggas this, you took this the shot. What, this is what happens, bro. It's, um, let's say, for instance, I take a public stance saying I'm not going to take it. You feel what I'm saying? Because mind you, I know people right now that have legit cards that – like right, I know a girl who'll sell you, who will do, who will let you go in there. She'll shoot the shit to the side and then fill you out and put you in the system like you took it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's for poor people. That's like a, a motherfucker yeah. you know around the corner. Yeah, you feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like in order to take the heat off yourself. Mm -hmm. And because I had, I had, a, um, I had a partner that got a car and he was just like, I'm gonna go and publicly say I'm vaccinated. I was like, don't do that. And I said, the reason why yeah. you shouldn't do that <laughs> is because you don't mm -hmm. know what the fuck is going on with that shit. And you, you got people who follow you and look up to you. That think, okay, cool, he got it, I'm going to go yeah. get it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And meanwhile, you around this bitch healthy like I ain't had no side effects. <laughs> it's like, bitch, because you ain't got shot. But listen, let me, let me give y'all let me give y'all a more. And after I, you I didn't want to go into your. Yeah, your, I didn't want to get, let me give y'all a more realistic conspiracy theory, right? We have always said for years that the government don't care about black people, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool, right? So, what group trusts the government the least? The least. What group of people? Black, black people, people, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What group is the most unvaccinated? Well, I ain't gonna group. even say that. I say black, I, white right. people trust the government the least. They don't. But go ahead. Even, though, even if they don't like the government, that's still our government. That's white people have have, uh, have figured that out. Like, to, to that we disagree until we have to agree. But what group is the most unvaccinated group? Black people, okay. right? Okay, fine. If there was a way to get rid of black people, which we we can't talk out of both sides of our neck. We've been said they don't care about us. They would get mm -hmm. rid of us if we could, right? Right. What's the easiest way to get rid of us, right? All I have to do is come up with something that I know y'all have distrust for us for. This is a conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. right? I'm just throwing out ones like okay. you, right? I know you distrust us the most. So we'll just come out with a vaccine, like knowing we about to release something that's going to kill off a bunch of motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. And then we can, sit back, we can sit back on our high horse and be like, well, we told y'all niggas to come get this vaccine. Yeah, gonna take so yeah, now, that we are, now that we got a shortage of them and we, we don't have enough vaccine mm -hmm. and there's a new COVID strand out wiping motherfuckers out, we told y'all to come get this shit. Nah, but so I, what but I'm saying is another theory could be 
LeBron just got the right information. He up there with them boys. No, nah, I don't think that's the case. And and, and um, but what I'm saying is, I, and I don't know for what I'm no, saying, I, I, you, but they're that's, both that's, equally that's, as that's that's, that's a great know? point. But yeah. at the same time, I, I think um, if that was the case, right? If that <laughs> was the case, case. listen. <laughs> if that listen, if that was the case, bro. Okay. If that was the case that they really didn't want niggas to go get it, yeah. and they wanted to look like they wanted the niggas to go get it, mm-hmm. they wouldn't have got our fucking hero juvenile to make vax that thing up. They wouldn't have got the dope. They wouldn't have got the, the trap of the year to right. say I sell things and I went and got but, vaccinated. But that was you big. That was and, big farmer though. The right. big farmer one. No, but the thing about it though, bro, black people aren't the least vaccinated. I don't think that's true. I I, I hold. We need to look that up. I don't think that's true. I wholeheartedly. We need to look that up. I don't think that is because we got iPads, Siri. Yeah, we do, yeah. but um, we 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 will look that up. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah but I don't think we are. I, 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 and I and I and I don't think this is a plot to kill just black people, bro. So I I that's why my that that's that theory doesn't work with me. I think mm-hmm. that is a theory to just depopulate. Period. Right, you feel right, what I'm saying? Right, right. That's what I think it is. I think it's just a, a theory to depopulate. Period, right. and and it's almost like motherfucking Squid Games. <laughs> you feel me? Like whoever the fuck yeah. you know is like, which is about to be the most watched movie in Netflix. It history, already is, which is crazy. Like, it already that's, is. That's dope. You like, watched it yet? Yeah, I watched it. That shit yeah. fire. That's dope. Yeah. That shit and I don't fire. even like voiceovers. Like I, I normally it. can't get through a voiceover, I, man, but I listen, finished that one. That was I was dope. watching that shit with somebody, mm-hmm. and they was like, "Turn this shit off." I was like, "Bro, this shit is good. Fire. I could tell. Mm-hmm. I could tell already." I said, yeah, "This yeah. shit gonna be so fire." It started slow, but that red light, green light, it was over. I blocked yeah. in after that. Though. It was over. Yeah, you seen it already? Yeah, that yeah. shit is mean Once central. Is, what? That little old man, a motherfucker. He was. I knew right. something was up with him from the beginning. But that bitch was smiling playing red you, light, green light. What game would you have to die in? Huh? What game would you have to die in? If there was a game you picked, you was going to die in, which one it would have been? Ah, uh, shit. I'm trying to think of which one I would have died in. Um... What they had, they had red light, green light. They had right. tug of war. Yep. Yeah, they had to goddamn cut the shape out the cookie. Mm-hmm. That's why I would have died because I got a nervous twitch anyway. I would have broke my Nigga, cookie, goddamn picking it up. Bro, <laughs> hey, but, hey, but hey, my hey, head no. shakes until I hit the skin. Oh, okay. Well, it's yeah, like a yeah. retardation. Yeah. Well, then you know, you got right as soon as you hit that little cookie. But if yeah. I would have caught Buddy licking that motherfucker first, yeah. you feel me? I would have survived. What else they had after that? They had the, he, the cookie. Tug of war, jumping on the glass. Uh, I would have died jumping light, on the glass. Yeah, I would have died there because that's like a that's chance. Yeah, like they would have gave tug of war. I'd have let that nigga buy me and be like, "Boy, you know you fucked up." (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm safe. I'm safe on this one though. But uh, yeah, no, that's a dope ass movie. But um, whistleblowing, which is the white term for snitch, Mm -hmm. you understand? So there's a there's a female white Takashi going around right now snitching on Facebook. If y'all noticed the other day, Facebook was down, Instagram was down, WhatsApp was down, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Francis Haugen. It's how you pronounce her name. 37-year-old female. Is it the she, white blonde lady? The white blonde lady. Okay. Right? She's a, a, a data analyst scientist. Something I've never heard of, but a, a, obviously a dope-ass position. Uh, she has a, what does she have? A, a business degree from Harvard. Master's degree from Harvard. I got some this too. Right. Go ahead. Worked for Google, Yelp, and Pinterest. So that's like a, a trifecta of internet jobs yeah. to have, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if this woman has saved up a nest egg. Amount, but she ain't gonna never get another fucking job the rest of her life. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hire you now if I had a chicken stand because I know you're gonna tell these people this ain't premium chicken and I get it from grocery <laughs> outlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely ain't premium. Yeah, yeah, nah, I that get ain't it. even chicken. Yeah, these quarters. Yeah, these land quarters. <laughs> Stop no telling bridge. these people. <laughs> so I wouldn't hire you. So I know ain't no nobody else gonna hire you. But maybe you saved up enough money at 37 from the positions you've had, right? So they say in a matter of eight. To nine hours, they swear that man lost about nine billion dollars, right? Lost over nineteen from September to this point. Uh, uh, what's buddy name? The owner, Facebook. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Mark yeah. Zuckerberg, right? But to put into perspective, right? He just fell under Bill Gates for richest person in the world. I think he's five or six now, right? He has that shit a, a, so he fast, has a bro. Me- but he has a measly one hundred and twenty point nine. Billion dollars, right? That's what he's at. He's right. so he's going to the poor house. So for those of you who don't understand what the fuck that means, the point nine in his money, not the one twenty, mm-hmm. the point nine is more than any of us will ever right. have in our Th- life. That's your Jay Z, yeah. right? That's your Diddy, like the motherfuckers you look up to. That's his point nine, just not for the one twenty billion. Yeah, not we ain't even. <laughs> 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 you said the point right. nine. Yeah, the money he lost is the money that the niggas that we look up to don't have. You get what I'm right. saying? All of them combined. Combined. Damn. So if you want to know how elite and how much power these motherfuckers have, bro, the point nine is the motherfuckers we dream of being. You get what I'm saying? That's insane. But interestingly enough, she um, 
she took a bunch of files from the job, so she planned this shit. I, I low-key think she was built up, sound like a disgruntled employee to me, but she still, some of that shit sounds factual, right? About it ruining teenage girls and their body image on Instagram, which I don't, I can't technically blame Instagram for that. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even though I do see how that affects, you know, women more than That's than just anybody. too much social exposure. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It mm-hmm. is too much social exposure. Um, but she says it, it increases uh, hate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They allow Too much social exposure, right. but go ahead. <laughs> right. Uh, they have a white list, which is a, a groups and organizations that are allowed, that, that they funnel their message. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Probably pay to play, payola type shit. Right. Big, huge corporations that pay eons of dollars, and that's what we focus on. You know what I mean? So she really calling, calling out Facebook for what they do, but the crazy part about it is she said something in her testimony. She said they damn near a trillion dollar company. And I thought to myself, like, bro, I don't care who with this man. I think he went to Harvard too, Mark Zuckerberg, right? How do you have a trillion dollar company, man? Like, I think of niggas like him, Bezos, Bill Gates, like. And I know we think that they're wealthy, but if you just really close your eyes and put your mind to it, brother, and to think that can't be life. You can sit here all. You can sit here a lifetime and can't count to a trillion. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that can't be like. That's that's almost that's a figment of your imagination. The life they live is like a figment of imagination. Because somebody said something that was interesting to me too, though. They said money isn't real; it's a thought. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, the paper true. that you spend is an idea of a thought. Mm-hmm. I give you this money for a thought of whatever this is worth. It's not like a thing. Right. That's why we can put your money in the bank. There's no dollar that you touch. That's why we can transfer it to cryptocurrency if we want to. Exactly. If the government want to wake up today and say rocks is worth something tomorrow, they right. Can do. That's what we're gonna it, be trading. It's just a thought. Right. I was like, oh, okay. You know, money what I mean? is an idea. So when you say this nigga's worth 120.9 billion dollars. It's just a thought of what his worth is, according to his company. And I said, man, that's a lot of pressure. Like, I can imagine, put it this, like, this nigga has, Mark Zuckerberg has a phone number in his phone where he could call and the president uh, pick up and be like, what's happening with you, my boy? You hear what I'm saying? Then he can call the president. But bro. he's more important than the president. But he is. And so, so to think about <laughs> so, that. So, yeah, like, I just started, the president it would be lucky to be right. able to contact but, him. But that's like, let's say me and you started this podcast, and it just became something so astronomical where, like, we got to answer questions for everybody. Bro, we'd never like, be the, the same. Y- yeah, like, that's you would never, You wouldn't even be able to function as a normal human. And I low-key yeah. started thinking about when I'm reading all the shit that she's saying that's wrong with Facebook and what he has to do as a business owner. First of all, the money is ridiculous. But like I'm responsible for billions of people, dog. Right. right. Like I'm because responsible you create, for your yeah. because you created something that they abused. Right. I'm responsible for your hate, your thoughts, your feelings, your relationship, your uh, pedof- pedophilia. I'm responsible for everything. <laughs> that that's like that's does. like being a motherfucker that that figured out what crack does, <laughs> and now you're responsible for, for every, every crackhead on the planet. <laughs> right. I say, man, this like that's okay. just a whole nother. Shit that you can't fathom, brother. But it's amazing to see how when Facebook went down yesterday, I realized I don't need this shit. Mm. Me too. I realized how much time I Me spent too. on the internet. Me too. Yeah. Me too. That Me shit too. And hours. it only went down for like eight hours and the right. world was in a, in a frenzy. Right. Motherfuckers was calling their Wi-Fi companies mm-hmm. like this shit ain't work. And I'm going to tell you what's crazy, right? This is how wild people are. And this is how fucked up we are. We were call People were calling... Cox Cable and all their cable companies and internet companies, right? Because their internet wasn't working, right? Not enough common sense to just try another website, yeah. right? Because right. everything else was working. Right. Google was working. Everything was working. That let you know, bro, that there are millions of sites that you could go to. Mm-hmm. All the information in the world. You feel me? Right. That's the only fucking thing we use the internet for is social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's That's like people didn't even like think to like, it let me try something internet. else. Right. You feel me? Motherfuckers resetting their phones, going to, you know, the iPhone 13 just dropped. Motherfuckers going to swap their phone out. You feel me? Thinking that it's a glitch in the 12 or a glitch in whatever phone they had, bro. Like, no, bitch, just try another website. I knew it was the, I knew that it wasn't the internet that was down because I fucking anything else. said, let me try Google. Let me try Gmail. Let me try my website. It all worked fine and fast. You feel Mm -hmm. me? But people are so hung up on social media and people didn't know what to do with themselves. Right. It's our life, bro. We've yeah, combined yeah, every. We've combined everything, bro. Like it's it's a it's a conglomerate. It's a monopoly. What I told it's you, our, it's our source for source for news. It's our source source for feelings, relationships, food. Yeah, yeah, food, entertainment, and that's, and that's everything. Why they, and that's is why on they use it to dog. manipulate us and control yeah, every fact, every fact. part of our life, uh, bro. They and what's funny is, bro, we 
75, 80% of the people in this fucking world get their news and information from memes. All day long. That used to be just jokes, like All passing jokes. That's, that's therapy. That's a therapist now. Mm. A, meme, a, a, a meme will get you through a tough situation or help problem. you make a decision. Yeah. Bro, it's insane. This bro. was a sign. A little quote. But what I, to, what, yeah. what, 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 what I told you when I came off of, um, when I was in COVID, mm-hmm. I told you, bro, that was the best thing that ever happened to me that I lost that page. Now I got it back. How much? How often do you see me posting? Now I got it back. I posted three times right. in fucking a month. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? It's just because, bro, I have no desire. Yeah. It's just like, bro, I'm I'm looking at the fucking. I'm. It's almost like looking at a rat running to a rat trap. Right. I'm a rat too, and I, all the rats running against trap, and I'm just like, bro, that you can't get that cheese, bro. <laughs> if you don't believe the mind is programmable, bro, all, all this shit is a matrix. All this shit is a thought that you live in. If you don't believe the mind can be programmed. It's the simplest thing in the world, bro. I want you to look at your cell phone. The next time you purchase something off your cell phone, watch it pop up again. Mm-hmm. Next time you think about purchasing something, it pop up. Go look for some or shoes, talk about it. a bag, yeah. mattress, anything. It's gonna pop up on everything you go on. Right. You can look at it on Google, and it's gonna be on your Facebook, it's gonna be on your Instagram. Until you motherfucking until buy it. Until you buy it. <laughs> until you buy it. It's the most like it's amazing how they figured out like. You niggas are programmable, but they, but they, right. they but they've always known. They've this, always bro. known that, and, and that's you, why you can become a trillionaire. That's why you can become worth one hundred and twenty nine billion dollars. And this this is what people need to understand: the most valuable thing in the world right now is information. Fuck learning how to do something. Fuck learning to trade. Fuck learning how to tattoo. Fuck learning how to do anything other than. Information. The richest people in the world right now are just fucking selling information. Yeah. If you watch all these fucking Instagram guys that are getting rich, they just selling information. Yeah. Knowledge is fucking power. Only way you can get fucking information is to fucking do research and read something. Right. You feel me? You not going to fucking find nothing worth a damn on your timeline. And I heard they got government contracts. I heard that's below my pay grade. But I heard Facebook has a, a contract with the FBI and shit like that for information. I heard Amazon has a contract with the government for data and, and socials and credit cards and habits. And you get what I'm saying? They, they This shit is worth billions and billions. Right. So of it, that's not even like hearsay, bro. Yeah. That's that's It has to be fact. Like, bro, this is what society functions off of now. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? If you shut down Facebook and Instagram, you shut down society right now. If you shut down social media, you shut down society. Right. People don't even know how to communicate outside of that shit. Yeah. Any right. any emotion or feeling that we have, we take it to social media. Yeah. Relationship mm-hmm. problems. We don't even talk to our spouse. We yeah, take it to social share, media yeah, first. Yeah, I find it. out how motherfuckers feel about me by looking at their page. Mm-hmm. We get into it and I look at their page and I'm like, okay, that's how you really feel. Because yeah, the motherfucker yeah. send you a message via social media. Right. A motherfucker feels some kind of way about what y'all are going through. Ain't man enough or woman enough to tell you. So I just posted on my story because I know I, I feel like you're gonna see it. Yeah, yeah human encounters yeah. are dead, bro. That's why I was working on that app. I had an app I was working on called Bar Tap. And it was a, a social media app. But it was a social media app that limited you. It got you to a so, certain point, but you had to go be social. Right. You feel me? So if you were in a bar with somebody and y'all were, somebody can take this because I'm not using it anymore. It's a billion dollar idea. Um, you and a pretty lady, or you at a bar and you see this pretty lady. So everybody that has this app, it's a location thing. And if you want to be discovered, you have it on. If you don't, you have it off. Right. So if you're in this bar and I'm sitting across from you and it's just like. beep this whole thing out. Right. So you know. Is so it's gonna make. so mm-hmm. if I'm in I'm in the bar and I'm looking at you and I'm like, damn, I really want to go fucking holler at this girl. But social media has made me antisocial. I don't even know what the fuck to say to a woman. Yeah, you'll find so, page Right. So what I do is I open up bar tap. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now this you gotta keep in mind that this is an app that everybody has now, just like Instagram. Right. right? So what it does is it, it locates and I can see who in this bar. Now there's limited amount of information that's disclosed about this person. It doesn't tell you a lot about them. It just has their profile picture because so you can see that this that's them. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And it has maybe whatever information they want disclosed just in this small box, right? Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. tap, right? You tap on them. That's why it's called bar tap. It's just like tapping somebody on the shoulder. Yeah. You tap them, right? And if they want to be bothered, they accept. You feel me? Right. And once they accept, their profile opens and you can see a little bit more about them. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And then it has different options. Send them a drink or ask them, can you come over? And all this and anything. Oh, it's an so, yeah, yeah, icebreaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that way, because the one, the one thing that we're afraid of is rejection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it cuts yeah, that yeah. part out. So... You hit tap. Like everybody in the club on that. You hit tap. Everybody gonna be looking down. Right. Everybody. And, but but you're gonna be li- you're gonna yeah. be looking down for a limited time though because this is how it works. You tap. You feel me? Um, 
can I can can I come over and talk to you? You right. feel me? Except that you 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 have like thirty characters that you can write once they accept your tap. Oh, man. You feel me? Can I come over and talk to you? Yes, you may. Damn, you got to close man. that shit up. Now you, you got to go over and you got to initiate conversation. You got to talk to them because the app doesn't allow you to do much more than that. Right. You feel what I'm saying? But it's an icebreaker app. You can be in the club, same situation. Right. Send you a drink or can I come talk to you? And if you don't want to be discovered, you just turn your location off. So when that person is looking around because this app is so popular and right. they see you not loc- you not you can't be located, that means you don't want to be bothered. Or if they tap you and you say you don't want to be bothered, you decline to tap and now you know she's not interested. And now let me show you how, what Facebook go through. You know how many stalkers going to love your app? You just made something for general happy interactions and people getting to know each other and people can abuse that shit. Right. You feel me? Right. But a stalker going to have fake profiles and be looking for his old ex-old lady mm-hmm. and bar tapping her as different people. But see, the thing about it, though, this is this is where yeah. to stop that, though. I already yeah, had a defense mechanism for that yeah. is that. If you tap you somebody, can't, you can't stop bad people, if, but, yeah, if, but if you tap somebody, right, mm-hmm. even if they don't accept your tap, they can see all of your information. They right. see your profile picture. And the yeah. thing about it is you have to have a picture of yourself. So if you tap me, if you tap me, if you tap me, fake dick pictures, but right. But if you tap me with a fake picture and I'm in this location, I don't even know who the fuck you are, or where you are. Right. You feel me? So if you tap me and I say, you can come talk to me and yeah. you come over and you're not your profile picture. Yeah. Shut down, and you're gonna get that no, same embarrassment that you were trying to avoid. But I'm a stalker anyway. Like yeah. I know you're gonna recognize I'm your ex when I walk up on you. But my thing is, bitch, what are you doing here? Right. <laughs> you feel me? Right. Oh, so you accepting niggas? You bar tapping? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I and I put I put I put maybe so you want that I put maybe you, like 10, you accepting niggas? Put like mm-hmm. 10, 15 grand into it, and I stopped the app because I knew, like, um, if you watch how. Big, big, like social media does. Right, right. If you have something like that, just like, um, um, what was the shit where people were um talking to each other? The last app they just came out with that was dope. Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. I already, I said it out. I said it before. I said Clubhouse is gonna probably last two to three months before Instagram or or Facebook comes and makes a part and takes that feature and fucking adds it to their shit. And you, you gonna sell us your shit? Mm-hmm. Or we gonna take your shit. The, their Facebook, so, so Facebook I, I was is making bar yeah, right. so I could basically sell, sell it, it. Yeah. because I knew it wasn't gonna survive long. And yeah. as I was making bar tap, yeah. fucking um, what was that? Um, Snapchat came out with fucking the locator after where you could open up and you could see exactly where everybody is. But bar right, tap right. was gonna be a thing to where it was like um, if you were within a certain vicinity, right. like within 200 yards is the only time you pop up. It's not going to pop nobody up that's fucking a mile away. It's right. not going to pop nobody up that's across the street. It's going to be people in your immediate, you feel mm-hmm. me, space. And if they're not in that space, it don't pop up. So nah, I got you. Yeah, so it, was, it would have been a dope app, and I think I would have made a lot of money off of that, but I'd just be picking up shit and starting shit and just putting it down. That's but that would have been I one I could have I mm-hmm. won I, with. I got a billion dollar idea app. We'll talk about that offline, though. I don't even... We're we'll talking about that on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Got some other shit going now. But I got some questions for you, man. So you are an author as well, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, what is it? Business and life transformation. Yeah, that's a book I put out. It's on uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble right now. Got you, got you. So I got a couple questions, man, and I don't want to get to all the details in the book, but um, becoming an entrepreneur, you say, you know, uh, without having to commute to work every day, without sitting in that office cubicle every day, being able to create your own hours, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, has a direct effect on your mental health, right? Most definitely. Right. Give me some of the correlations you feel like becoming an entrepreneur has on the benefits of just a person's mental health. Because me as a person who works a nine to five, I understand how that going through that motion every day really does affect you in a negative way mentally. You get what I'm saying? Most definitely. So what do you think? Uh, how does that affect your mental health when you become an entrepreneur? I say the number one thing for me is uh, I'm a father of three, so my number one thing is uh, is time, mm. the be the, the ability. I know just me working for somebody, I always had to check in with them, um, let them know when I'm finna take some time off, things of that nature. Never really had time for my kids. Right. The, op- the opportunity to be an oppo- uh, entrepreneur and having that time back to yourself is you got the opportunity to be wherever you want to be, whenever you want to be, with, with whoever you want to be with. Right. So, that, I mean, that's that's the plus side of it. You got that time freedom back. Got you. Now, this is a personal question for me, though, uh, th- that you say that because I also, um, I'm the father of a daughter. I have custody of my daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, what gave you the courage to step out on your own and become that entrepreneur? Because did you have children before you decided to make that leap? Oh, yeah, most definitely. So I did. Uh, I served seven years in the Marine Corps. Shout and, uh, out. You know Thank I mean? you for your service, brother. I appreciate Big that. Shit, yeah. I appreciate that. If you know anything about the Marine Corps, you know, or anything about the military in general is 
you ain't in control of your time. Right. So my thing was, um, I, I always knew that I always wanted to work for myself. And then also, I knew I needed time for my kids. Because I know this, I'll tell you the perfect example. I had, 2018, I had just got the Marine Corps in uh, October of 20. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to come up on a little, my little anniversary for Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I had uh, separated from the Marine Corps. And then fast forward to June of 2019, I got my kids for the summer. I was working a job. Um, I was making $48,000 a year at a railroad industry. Pretty good money, especially for Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, you you pretty, you pretty straight round up for $48,000 a year. Right, right. But at the same time, I was going to work at 3 o'clock, getting off of work at 11 o'clock. Noticing. Oh, okay. Keep in mind, now, I had my little brother here, too. And uh, shout out to my little brother, Major, because he's doing a big thing, uh, cutting everybody hair. But um, pretty much, I had to bring him from Pensacola, Florida to Jacksonville, move my little brother with me in order to watch my kids so I can go to work to make money. To me, that really ain't make no sense. I was right. getting off, I was going to work at 3, getting off at 11. Then I got to play dad from 11 to maybe 3 o'clock in the morning because I'm already lacking time. Mm-hmm. Then we go to sleep. And them some shitty hours to play dad, too, but go ahead. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's a fact, yeah. Because ain't nothing open, and you can't eat nothing. I mean, yeah. it, it, eyes, it, Kids' it, eyes ain't open. Got yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much. It's just, yeah. And then when you finally do go to sleep and wake up, you ain't waking up to 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But keep in mind, I just told you I had to go to work at 3 o'clock, mm-hmm. so I ain't got no time to... So for no time for nothing. Shit right. sound like my life. So it was just a big, it was a big circle. And then on the weekends, the weekends is only limited because you get off of work at 11 o'clock on a Friday, and then you got to go to back to work at 3 o'clock on a Monday. But right. at the same time, you're still trying to play catch up. And a working man, Friday don't count. For anybody right. who work a job, Friday don't yeah. even. Yeah. Don't even yeah. ask me about to go doing nothing Friday. Saturday I, really I got, your only day. That's it. I got Saturday <laughs> for Sunday you. Sunday don't count either because yeah, you're right. prepping for tomorrow. Yeah, and everybody wants your Saturday. The kids, old lady. Mm-hmm. Your friends, everybody. Damn, but go ahead. Exactly. So you ain't had no time. So my thing was, I, I just noticed that that was my main thing. I ain't had no time for nothing. So at the same time, I was like, okay. And then what made it made it even worse was the money side of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I already had no time. But then at the same time of me not having time, I don't have any money. So I get paid and then my check gone. Right. I got to wait two more weeks. I got to go work 40 hours. It don't make no sense to me. I'm all, I got to go work 40 hours for you and I'm broke at the same time. Yep. I'm, I'm coming to disgruntle everything. I don't want to hear what you yeah. really got to say because... I ain't got enough. You ain't paying me enough money to be here, so it's kind of like, what you really doing for me? So that that was my transformation, my trans, my 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 viewpoint. Matter of fact, and then and then, kind of life had happened with a uh, child support. They they came, crept in my back pocket, stole my wallet, and I had a four hundred dollar check. So I was like, oh hell, nah, that ain't it. <laughs> I was like, you gotta be some out here for That's me. That's terrible, boy. boy if you ain't never seen that, boy, if you ain't never seen that happen on your job, boy, that make uh, a man cry, boy. Man. Absolutely, I just seen Chelsea. Who the fuck is Chelsea? Hit me in the chest. Trust me, got half my goddamn money. <laughs> I done seen niggas break down in the parking lot about that, about that payday child yeah. support, especially that first one to hit you wasn't expecting. Man, them what? folks tell you, got you, bitch. They got Man. me, look, they got me two times because the first time I ain't believe it. Mm-hmm. The second time I was like, oh, this shit is true. So I was like, hey. <laughs> you thought they made a mistake? <laughs> yeah, I thought they made oh, a mistake. Man. I got paid on the Tuesday. I came to work on that Wednesday at 3 o'clock. By 3.15, I was packing my stuff out of the I was like, okay, if 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 it's I ain't, all I'm getting, hell no. Yeah, if it's all I'm, I'm getting, like, I ain't finna waste my time, and I got to go figure it out. It's either I'm finna be the biggest dope boy in the city, or, or, or I'm laying in somebody's bushes, or I got to go figure yeah. out something that's gonna make me some money to provide for these kids. Yeah, a big a big lesson for people is this, man: is that time is money, but money is not time unless you use money to buy time. Exactly. You feel me? And that that's why I felt like for so long I was a horrible fucking father is because I made I spent my time to make money and I took that money and I spent it on my kids, <coughs> mm-hmm. buying them all the things that they ever wanted and all the shit that I never had, the same shit that black people say all the time. But at the end of the day, all of those things that you purchase will get old and they will not have value and your kids won't remember those things. So what you do, what I learned to do, a lot fucking way too fucking late, but I learned how to do it is that you take your time, right? And you invest your time to make money. 
and you take that money and you use that money to buy more time than you originally had. And instead of spending money on your kids, spend that time on your kids to create experiences. Mm -hmm. And when you make those experiences with those children, those experiences last a lifetime. They never forget those. You, know. you feel what I'm saying? And then you may have a little bit time left, a uh, time left to fucking invest in more money. So it's just like there's nothing wrong with being a nine somebody with a nine to five. Don't ever get that twisted. You know. But the thing about it, if you are spinning your wheels, it's a hamster wheel. You have to get off of it at some point. You feel what I'm saying? So if you're not investing your time to make money, to create time to do your own thing. You feel me? You wasting your fucking time mm -hmm. and you can't get time back. You can get money back. You can't get time back. So for anybody that has a nine to five, don't never let nobody discourage you or make you feel like it's not OK to have a job. You feel what I'm saying? Yep, exactly. But it is not OK to not have a fucking plan to get off that job. You feel what I'm saying? As long as you have a job, you give somebody the right to strip your fucking freedom. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you are somebody that's working a job and been on that job 30 years and you've done nothing to remove yourself from that job, go get the COVID shot. Yeah, you wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> More of the story is take the vaccine. But uh, <laughs> but now nah, I'm, 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 but you said a mouthful though, brother. This shit is a hamster wheel, and I've been in the process of trying to figure out how to get my way off, starting with this. But the reason why I said that is because I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I started off by saying that. You know, sometimes how your family raised you is the mentality that you get. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. my, my people are, you know, uh, country, hardworking, Mississippi, Louisiana people, right? Mm -hmm. So when we moved to Florida, which is uh, or Pensacola, which is considered a city compared to where we come from, right? Uh, we see success as I remember. I, I remember when I used to think people from the hood were rich. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. coming from the country, you don't see none of this shit. Man, right, niggas right. had rims and cars and. Name brand clothes and like you get what I'm saying. Not breaking right. no generational curses. <laughs> right. <go ahead. laughs> so you know, my father being you know the hardworking person he is, still one of my biggest role models to this day. You know what I mean? Uh, but he didn't Shout know how to get him. A, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he didn't know how to get off that hamster wheel either. And then eventually his demons conquered him. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for me, I realized that a period of time, and I'm a, and, and this is a question I'm going to ask you: Is everybody meant to be an entrepreneur? Because for years. I wasn't meant to be an entrepreneur, right? So do you think that everybody is meant to take that leap in general? No, I'll tell you, I, I, my, my standpoint on that question is it, 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 it's simple as if everybody was doing the same thing, who will be doing everything else? Right, right. We can't go to I Wendy's and get a hamburger if everybody ain't working at Wendy's right, no if more. if everybody so. on, trying to own the Wendy's. Yeah, so, yeah. so so, everybody can't do the same thing. You got to take that special person who really, who, who's, who done looked at everybody and stood out and with their hands crossed like, I mean, I'm ready to do for some do something different. I'm ready to make some more money. Right. That's gonna be that person that make that change to make that big difference. Right. Yeah. So is it I, any I, I gotta disagree with that though. I'm gonna say this. I think everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. And I'm gonna say this, and I say it like this, but I also feel like there's an order of operation. I feel like just like anything else, people should serve time in certain ranks. You don't just wake up and be an entrepreneur. You go through a process. Yes, there should always be somebody at Wendy's flipping hamburgers, but that should be a fucking cycle. Your ass should be, I should be 16, 17 flipping burgers at Wendy's, yeah. but when I'm 19, 20, I should be the manager of that motherfucker. And when I'm 24, 25, I should be trying to figure out something else. It's not okay to flip burgers from 16 to 40. Right. You feel me? Because you're clogging. That's the thing about it. It's like, it's it's a system, bro. Yeah, don't get caught. It's like, don't clog the lane, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You want supposed to be here flipping burgers 10 years you're supposed to be here for two three years and you're supposed to go on to the next thing it's a cycle so it's just like anything else like when you get in the military you don't start out with a high rank you go through levels yeah. and then you level up but it's always cycling like we're, we're retiring motherfuckers mm -hmm. and we got motherfuckers taking your position but if you never fucking retire how could somebody else rank up All so right. it's just like and when i say entrepreneur i don't mean everybody's not meant to be a chief there has to be some fucking Indians. Right. You feel me? Entrepreneur doesn't necessarily mean you have to go fucking start a business, but have a plan with what the fuck you're doing to move you forward. We should always be advancing. That's what I'm saying. Right. We yeah. should always be advancing until we die. Just like you should always be learning until you die. Them muscles that you got today, if you don't work out tomorrow, you won't have them next week. Right, right, you have right. to keep working out to keep to stay with you to, to keep advancing. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. And but I, but I've learned over time, and I think that's through having jobs. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That uh, everybody ain't meant to advance. Mm -hmm. And when I say meant to, 
everybody don't want to. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, everybody don't want right. to. I want to and mentor are different, but go ahead. No, 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 they're, no, they're the same. They're mutually exclusive, mm-hmm. right? Go ahead. Because Tell me why. if you're meant to, there's a desire, there's a want. You might not know how to get there. You might be scared. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But when you hear the idea, you know it's for you. You get what I'm saying? You might not know how to reach it. Somebody might have to pull your ass along. You get what I'm saying? But you know it's for you. There are people that you could tell how to advance, and they'll tell you no. Right. Because they don't want that life. That life that you dream of, I don't want that. This right here, wherever I'm at, is mm-hmm. good enough for me. Like, some people have a cap. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. Their life is is comfortable being right here, and I don't want nothing more than that shit. Even right. if you could give it to me, like I don't want that shit though. So I, I have realized by being on jobs because, for instance, when I started working offshore, I became an engineer on my own, bro. I, I've always been one of these people. If you show me how to do it, I'll become better at it than you. Mm-hmm. Not as an insult to anybody. It's just how my brain functions. If you show me how to do something, I'll adapt and I'll come up with something that'll even make it bigger and better you feel me but something that i've never seen has always conquered me like i don't know how to start a business i've never made a contract Mm -hmm. i've never paid an employee i've never you get what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so i would never step out on that limb because i don't know how to do it right but once let's say this becomes a functioning successful thing we got staff and employees and everything once i see it done one time oh man it's off to the races business here business like that's how my brain functions but i've been on jobs bro I watched uh I watched a guy do engineer work that I was smarter than. Mm-hmm. Knew I was smarter than him, but he was a great engineer, right? I watched him do engineer work, but I didn't know what an Allen wrench was. I don't I didn't know how to change oil or tire on a motherfucking car, let alone a boat engine. You get what I'm saying? Right. Massive ass Cummins engine. But just by watching him over time, and when you told me I can make more money, bro, I went without even going to the school. Bro, I went and got the book. Taught myself mm-hmm. when it took the test and became an engineer on my own, bro. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Just from watching, learning, and understanding. So I had a partner who who came on. I, I like he wasn't my. I didn't grow up with him or nothing. I just met him from working on the ships. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And I told him like, "Hey, bro, no, you can do this too, though. You can get the paychecks I'm getting. You see, in my life, all the shit that I'm buying, bro. Let me tell. You, I did X, Y, and Z. This that. Like most people hold information from you, right? Mm-hmm. But I ain't like that. Once I figured out, like I'm gonna tell you exactly, like, bro, go do this. One plus two equals three. You got it. That man ain't want that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, no, thank you, bro. I, I'm I'm good. I rather. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna chime in on that because mm-hmm. because I know this in, in my field of when I do, I, I got the opportunity of I hire and develop people as well. Right. So um, right now, personally, I'm sitting at about six people. Um, between Louisiana, Pensacola, Virginia, that I'm personally training to develop right now. And they got life insurance license. They send life insurance. Cool. But at the same time, I noticed that with within those people who got their license already, I'll, I, I got to hire people and bring them into business and, and, and show them how to get to the next level. I heard them been there. I don't know. Don't walk the path. Don't, yeah, I hear everything. But you'll notice that dealing with people, that a lot of people that if it's, if it's super simple and and, and, and uh. My best way of putting it, putting putting it an example is when you get a job, you guarantee that check. Right. You work forty hours, you do the math. That's how much your check going to be. You get. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship, it don't work that way. Mm-hmm. You got to put in the, the work, the hustle, the, the 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 grind, but you don't know how much your check going to be. Right. It ain't it ain't it ain't no no mathematical. You got to talk to these this amount of this amount of people. Then these people going to actually show up. Then you actually going to really get a chance to do business with these people. So your check going to be this. You really can't really do that math entrepreneurship. Yeah. So that I can't I think that's kind of the the wall that that mm-hmm. separates people from agree taking that mm-hmm. chance or or, or. Cause that scares a lot of people. A lot of people prefer to be an employee based on the fact that if I work this many hours, I know my check mm-hmm. is guaranteed. Right. You know as an entrepreneur, you know as an entrepreneur, I may make ten grand this week, I might not make nothing next week. Mm-hmm. I may make twenty grand this month, I might not make five grand but this month. You get what I'm saying? So that uncertainty for a lot of people will, will deter them from being an entrepreneur. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think um when it comes to that, I feel like any system put into place is meant to do something. But it won't do it for everybody because everybody isn't wired a certain way. And a lot of that wiring comes from just like your history and your upbringing and how you were and how you were groomed. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? So if you were groomed in a certain fashion, the things that were meant to work for you usually will work. Right. Just like you say, you're not an entrepreneur, but if I give you the information, you can become you can one become right. because you have the drive. Right. But you see, I've me? always known I've been one. Right. I just never had the inf- information. When right. you come from, when you become a first generation entrepreneur, like your children will be more inclined to be an entrepreneur because 
because of you and because of you. Right. You know what I'm Absolutely. I'm getting to see it firsthand. Right. I've never like you. You're a peer of mine. You're younger than me, an entrepreneur. I, I'm. I'm not. You're a peer of mine. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm learning from a dude that's my age. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's one of those type of things. If I had to see that from ground up. I would be an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying is that a lot of these systems, like the systems are there. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's just like we don't choose to use them from the ground up. Mm -hmm. But like there's nothing that's in play right now that didn't exist before we figured right. it out. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like the the drive or the or the ambition to do that. You feel me? It's like a lot of people haven't been pushed to the brink. Most entrepreneurs were pushed into being entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Just like when he's talking about his job, like, bro, that wouldn't have worked. Right. At some point, you had to get off the hamster wheel because you were forced. I was forced into entrepreneurship. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't wake up in the morning and say, I want to be my own boss. No, poverty did that. Right. You feel mm -hmm. me? Working at Wendy's and working at Burger King, I'm like, this shit ain't adding up. Right. I'm starving. My kids are starving. I had the same situation he did. Wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, drive two hours to get to work every day, get there, stay all day, get off at 6, get home at 8, wake up six days a week. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm... My son don't even know who the fuck I am, and I'm with him every day. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just like this shit doesn't work. I was forced into that. It was a choice that I had to make, and it was just like most people aren't forced into that. Like you say, you got a job, and it's just like circumstances are different for them. This money is enough. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything stopping me or making me move forward. But I guarantee you, when when we about to approach a space, that's why I say we about to approach a space in this economy to where everybody's going to have to be a fucking entrepreneur. Right. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or you're going to fucking be on the hamster wheel for the rest of your life because that's what they're trying to design it to be. You feel me? But at, right in this in this state for survival, everybody's going to have to become an entrepreneur. Everybody's going to have to figure something out. Even if your entrepreneurship is being a fucking robber or a looter, you're going to have to be something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to gonna have to be fucking that, something. That you're going to be a taker or yeah. you're going to be a maker. One or the other. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So it's just like, bro, um, we're usually forced into being bosses, bro. It's not something we always choose. If you had the choice to be a boss, that's a luxury. But yeah. I didn't have a fucking choice to be a boss. It was fucking sink or swim. Right. And I decided I wanted to swim. But I've watched a lot of people sink. Yeah. You feel me? And those are the same guys that I had somebody knock on my window today. And I'm just like, nah, bro. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, you off the deep end. Like, And it's like, it wasn't to be nasty, but it's like, bro, we have no conversation to be had. Right. You feel me? You have nothing to offer me. I have, there's nothing good going to happen, happen from this conversation. Or so he, I'm going to pull off trying, on you. Trying to get, trying trying to get my head. attention to, to talk about some shit that I know wasn't going to be profitable for neither one. Like, it, like, bro, you have nothing to offer me. Mm -hmm. You damn near homeless, man. You feel what I'm saying? Here go a few dollars bro but we ain't got nothing to talk about you feel what i'm saying you already yeah. been sunk yeah. you feel me there's nothing i can do for you right now because you feel what i'm saying yeah. so and and it, that's why i say it's important bro that like it's meant for all of us to fucking progress but we all won't because we don't all have the desire to do the things that are meant for us yeah you feel what i'm saying like we all have a destiny mm -hmm. you feel me i believe that every human has a destiny but i feel like very few will fulfill those destinies because we don't have the ambition or drive to do it That's you feel me it point. might be meant for a lot of motherfuckers to be in the nfl you six eight two forty run a four six but if you don't have the ambition to line up with that, you won't reach your destiny. Right. And you're probably going to end up in the trash bin. That's what happens with things that we can't use. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's meant to do something. It's not doing what it's meant to I got this knife. It's meant to cut something. It's not cutting anything. No, that's a fact. What else can yeah. I use it for? In the trash. You feel been, what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been shorting mine because of a poor mindset. I have a poor mindset, which I'm trying to get rid of. But when I mean poor, not like I think uh poor thoughts or anything like that just a poor man's mindset right will, will prevent you from doing certain and things we inherit too. that a lot of the time exactly. yeah. you feel me like you say your father was on the hamster wheel right. and that leaves you rich dad poor dad that leaves you with a poor man's mindset right. you feel me like i'm people, shaking that muff people boy, people who people it's hard to reset it's them. hard <laughs> the hardest yeah. thing to do is unlearn yeah. mm -hmm. and before you can learn anything you have to unlearn what you know right. our minds are like memory cards just like we recording this podcast in order for us to put some more shit on here we got to erase some shit yeah. Yeah. you feel what i'm saying so it's just like bro we have to we have to understand that we have to unlearn and relearn i kind of say too though that kind of gave me like the advantage though, over, over over i say my peers because I grew up in a household with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my grandfather was the father figure that I looked up to. My grandmother, she was a hard worker. Yeah. She came from the Marine Corps, you know, just like me. Cool. But my dad, he was more so like my brother. We grew up in the same household. We grew up underneath my grandparents' roof. So it's kind of like, okay, what really can you teach me? You really can't teach me. And then once I, uh, you know, go past what you could teach me, then mm -hmm. it's kind of like, 
Now I got to seek from other people. That's exactly right, why. Right. I, right. And, 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 and that's low key cool too, because as a as a point, that that's really what your parents. And I'm not saying that's the the best way to do it, but. Your parents are supposed to lead you to a certain level, right. and then you're meant to survive. Right, you right, know what I'm right. We don't, right. we don't, we right. don't know enough to leave our kids. Right, like what I what I leave you with ain't enough. Right, your kids you, it's on you. Wherever right, you are. I'm going to leave you with what I'm with at 17, 18. Yeah. Now, mind you, this is a 40 year old man worth of knowledge that I'm giving you at 17, 18. Right. You mm-hmm. feel me? So take this shit and elevate it. So mm-hmm. by the time you 40, you got 80 years worth of knowledge. Exactly. Leave that with your jit. He gonna add 40 more to it, and that's how generational wealth is born. You feel me? You leave knowledge and we cycle. right, but that's why I'm I'm shooting this documentary with you, Bowie, bro. Is because far too often black people are just resetting. Right. Like white can people. Can I get in the documentary? Can I get in the doc? The, this is a family oh, yeah. documentary. This is what I'm gonna tell you. I ain't why family. Doing. Can I get like a part where I talk about like you know where I met the nigga or something? Like, oh. <laughs> so this is what we're doing, right? Yeah. This this is what we're doing. It's like um um my my little sister posted the other day. Posted a picture of my grandma when she was young. Right. Never seen my grandma as a young woman in my life. It's like, happy birthday, grandma. Happy heavenly birthday. And I'm just like, who, like, if I would have passed by this and didn't see my sister post, I wouldn't know who the fuck this woman was. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm just like, to me, that made me think, like, damn, bro, like, we so disconnected from our lineage. Other cultures pass the torch and pass fucking success on. You feel what I'm saying? It's like so many of us are first generation of something. You feel me? Right. So what's funny though is that is that my kids will have kids, right? And if I don't properly properly groom my kids, their kids won't know who the fuck I am. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Right. All that fucking knowledge, all of that hustle, all of that everything is fucking lost. Right. And we just keep losing that. You feel me? We don't know anything past our grandma. We don't know great grandma. We don't know great great grandma. We don't like they said, if you don't know where you come from, you cannot possibly know where you're going. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm doing this documentary, bro, to cement something. You feel me? Cement. I got 10 siblings, bro. I'm getting an hour and a half interview from each one of them telling their story from their eyes, from their up, from their view of life. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I learned so much about my brother just in one interview that I stories about my dad and him that I never knew, never knew yeah. that I never knew. Mm-hmm. But this is something that we can my grandkids can play. You feel me? And know who their granddad is and know who their grandmother is. Technology is a motherfucker. No, that's dope. No, you that's, feel me? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like now we're not getting, our lineage is not getting lost. Who we are is not getting lost. Not yeah. only do you see what your grandfather looked like, you know exactly who he was and where he came from. And you know who his mother is and who their mother is. You feel me? So it's like for us, that social media and the technology is helping us so much because we can submit things. One thing that we hadn't done as a culture is submit a lot of things. We don't like we lose shit. I don't know what my grandfather looks like. I don't know who his father was. You feel what I'm saying? But if I go to some of my my white compadre, my white friends and my Mexican friends or they my know. Asian friends, yeah, yeah. they know who their great great grandmother is. They going yeah, back to fucking 1876. Right, right. You black and white drawings, not even photos. Mm. You feel me? But that's low key becoming our culture and for. Uh, uh, which is, which is terrible. Like we do that in every aspect because mm-hmm. we, the younger generation has a fuck the last generation mentality. Even in sports, we see, everything you know, we see in sports, music, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. Like it's just that's just low key what we're becoming. And this is going to be a podcast topic in the future. I wanted to do this with a bunch of females. Was how long should you raise your kids? A lot mm-hmm. of times, as black people, eighteen is the cutoff. You grown? Go ahead. Ain't nobody do nothing Horrible. for me past this. Yeah, Horrible. So Horrible. Way too Horrible. Early. Right. Horrible. You should you should you should parent your kids for as long as you're their fucking parents. Right, you feel me? Exactly. Yeah, that don't mean fucking let them sleep on your couch for the for the rest of their life. But that means like, bro, you have to be because the thing about it is I'm I'm 20 something years older than my kid. I'm always going to be 20 years ahead of him. Right. You feel me? So when he's 40, I can give him some information from a 60 year old motherfucker. Right. You feel what I'm saying? To prepare him to be 60. Yeah. But it's like we we get them to 18 and it's like you out on your own. Right. And then we wonder why they don't want to listen to shit when you want to t- double back and be a parent. That's what the yeah. fuck. That's what the fuck the previous generation comes from. Right. Because we we push them out the nest like we done with you, and then when we see you got it wrong, we trying to explain some shit to you, and right. we like go ahead with that young blood shit. We ain't trying to hear that right. shit. Out of right. 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 We didn't, we figuring this out on our own. Right. Type shit. Right. Right. So it just becomes a habit. But that's definitely a, a, a topic that I want to get into, man. Uh, you said something about homeless shit, and my my mind just I ramble in my brain sometimes, brother. I was supposed to give a, I was gonna give a homeless man five dollars a day, but I didn't because his Gatorade was cold, and I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, though, don't, don't laugh. <laughs> Listen, though, it's real shit. I was reaching for the money and then it was blue. Yeah, blue. 
was reaching. <laughs> I was reaching for the money to get it man by this man. <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching for the money to get this man five dollars, right? And just some when I looked up, I just caught his bag. He had his bag sitting down, right? And he was coming, he was coming. Like I, I, I got his attention. I was gonna give him five dollars. Mm, yeah. And then I just caught a glimpse of his. You know, you can see a cold gate. Yeah, I can see a cold gator red. I'm like, oh man, Hell no, hell no. Bro, I was so bad with that, bro. He had to shake his hand off. What's funny though? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bad, bro. He had to shake his hand. Yeah. <laughs> you can nah. sweat off his head. <laughs> Nah, like, man, bro, if you if you can walk, blah, this is mine, this is mine. Yeah. If I'm finna give you some money <laughs> and you get up and you move better than I move, your knees good. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Oh, man, no, bro. Enough. You need to be in the wheelchair to get my money. Mm. You need to be in the wheelchair. You need to be disabled. Yeah. You need to have one arm. You need to have something disabling you. Yeah. Bro, I done seen too many motherfuckers with the knees that I want to go play basketball. <laughs> Meanwhile, my shoulder fucked up and knees fucked up. I can't go hoop. You get up with these big ass calf muscles. You yeah. feel me? Nah, you got to work on your yeah, no. If you're going to yeah. get free money, you got to walk on, like Jordan or something. Man, don't yeah, think yeah. that goddamn why lie, I need a bill sign going to work. You ain't getting no bill, bitch. Nah, you should have lied. Yeah, you should have lied. That's why I lied. You should have lied. You should have limped over this bitch. That, that boy said, boy, that's the, that's the wildest shit I ever heard. <laughs> that boy said... <laughs> <laughs> I just caught a glimpse of that man Gatorade. That Gatorade was cold. I can I can see it, bro. You that sweating ass Gatorade sitting by this dusty ass bag. Yeah, he had he did his bag. What? <laughs> his bag was dusty as fuck though. Uh, I saw all that. I know you ain't hungry or thirsty because you didn't crack the Gatorade, right? And you'd have drunk a little bit of it. Right. And I can see the seal broke from the street. You feel me? Man, that bitch was You heavy. ain't really thirsty. Yeah, that bitch was extra foggy. You know when it's cold. Yeah, like, you supposed yeah, to open that bitch cold, and drink all of it if you, you fucking real quick. You desperate for yeah. real. That bitch supposed yeah. to be empty. Right. That bitch was hot. New, that was newly cold and we won by no store. You can't be homeless with a lunchbox. <laughs> That's what you can do. That's how you get, why you got a lunchbox? Where you, where you, <laughs> you, right. you prep for this shit. Yeah. Like, no. Nah, nah, exactly. Come, nah. Exactly. Bro, I would be a horrible ass homeless man, bro. I wouldn't do good. Now you know all the rules, though. You do great, man. I wouldn't you do know good. all the rules. I just, I really, I just, I just, I like, bro. I just, I think I would be a robber and a bank robber before I beg, bro. I, I just, yeah, I yeah, can't draw myself to stand on the side of the road and ask for nothing. And not to say, because yeah, no, you no. can never say never. And we don't know where we're gonna end up or what we're gonna end up doing. But I know this, goddamn it. If you see me as a homeless yeah, man, right around the corner. Yeah, if you see me as a homeless man, bro. I'm not coming to your car for no change. I'm coming to your car. Two lefts. Yeah, I'm coming to your car to rob you. Right. I'm I'm not coming to beg. Are you going to give me something? Yeah. Well, I'm going to take some. But like you say, but it could be out of, and that's the difference, though. If you beg out of necessity, if you just at your wits end and you, you know, you didn't exhausted all your opportunities and you got to ask for something, I don't even figure like that's big. That's, that's, no. That's accent. No, you, you better give me something. That's but what that lot, is. Yeah, but a lot of times those people, like I said, that, that nigga had a cold Gatorade. I knew there was other options for you. Bro, <laughs> I you just feel like, bro, money, like, man. yeah, man, man no, I bro. no money, man. I'm not. Yeah, just if, if you ever meet a homeless man like I would be a homeless man, keep your window up if you ain't going to give me nothing. And don't make eye contact man. with me because I'm going I'm to throw rocks and bust windows. <laughs> I'm gonna do all kinds you of wild shit when you tell me no. Man, I'm gonna be nice until you say no. Yeah. I'm gonna be like the dude that's trying to holler at you at the store. Shit, that's hey, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. Hey, hey beautiful. Nah. And when you don't get, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. You have a homeless dude that was trying to shake your hand to thank you? <laughs> <laughs> then you get to show your real color. You don't, care about, you don't really care about helping people. Yeah. That's when you get to show if you're real. You're military. No, you never gave oh, one man, a hug. You got me fucked up. <laughs> man, listen. <laughs> man, brother. <laughs> if a homeless dude. Hug? Man, brother. I'd have hugged the homeless person before. You a damn liar. Swear to God. Brother, that man. I have. He was, that man was newly homeless. No, he was homeless. He was stinking nah, everything. He smelled man. like pure piss. Get him nah, up. First of all, homeless has a smell. Like it's the it's like Well, it wasn't a homeless dude, it was a woman. It was a woman. I ain't never hugged a homeless dude. Two arm hug? Huh? Two arm hug? Nah, you know a little side hug. You weren't finna you know I ain't finna embrace you. Huh? She was under She was short, like so she did. Yeah. Yeah. She had a little dusty head. She was like, you know how women cut their hair off and it'd be like a little fro. Little yeah. flow with little grass in it and shit. I'm she like, was, yeah. Boy, she don't touch nothing but clothes. But if you, yeah. you skin to skin, 
I fucked around and shook a homeless dude's hands and felt all them peanuts in that nigga hand. <laughs> but I was so motherfucking mad because he caught like he just caught me so <laughs> off guard and I was like, all right, big dog. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you felt man. like you need the bathe. Man, brother, that nigga had a rock climbing wall in his hand, brother. I'm like, I'm not yeah. touching none of this. But I guess I get I guess it's not it's a little different for me personally because um like I've I just come from a place to where that was like a normal thing. It wasn't like really like I just like to see somebody like and I'm genuinely I genuinely fucking love everybody and I genuinely look at everybody on the same scale. You feel right. me? I don't look at a homeless pe- person and feel like they're less than me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You just less fortunate at this moment. Right. And I could yeah. be where you are. Some you feel me? I'm not gonna stay here, yeah. but I could be where you are someday. Right. So it's just like, yeah, so it's just for me, I, I look at them the same. I don't really look at them on a different scale. So it's kinda hard for me to get the money though, because I be sitting there thinking like, I'm a dad, so it's kinda like okay. Nah, if it, this this my rule though, and I'm gonna sound real fucking racist, is I don't give white homeless people money. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, and I, I, I and I don't give white homeless people money. Oh my um, god! And I don't give men money. I don't give homeless men we gotta, money. We got to clip that. That's no, promo. Not, and I'm gonna tell you why, bro. Given like, bro, you. That if you have, bro, you live in privilege, bro. Your skin is a past, motherfucker. Why? If you, if, yeah, unless, like unless, mental health issues? Uh, no, unless you're disabled or you have mental health issues. Yeah, but ain't no sign to say I got mental health. No, you can kind of tell sometimes. No, not in the, not if I'm holding a sign. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm like you say you're, you you're about, mis, you hold on. misspell some shit. For no, you? Hold, no, just like you evaluated, you seen that cold Gatorade. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> and you was about to give him something till you seen the cold Gatorade. Right. So my thing is, there's an action in the moment, and, and 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 bro, I come from poverty. I can tell when you fucked up for real, mm-hmm. and I can tell when you're not. Mm-hmm. That stroll over gonna tell me everything I need to know. When so I make what, eye contact with you and I say, "Hey, bro," bro yeah. I, and once I've already committed to give it to you, I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. But Sound like if you never get it, already judge them. Like I, no, no, bro, you like I'm not even making eye contact with you, bro. You live in privilege. Like I don't give a fuck, bro. Like no, no, bro, that white skin. Give me that skin. I'll never be homeless. You feel me? Like bro, I had to overcome all these obstacles, and you got them got good calf muscles, and you. No, bitch, you ain't even dirty enough. Like, cold, no, bro. Really and then, too, though, I be yeah. looking around. Or a you cold, you going to judge me because I say I'm not giving money to a motherfucker with privilege, but you won't give a motherfucker no money because it's Gatorade sweating? Yeah, because that's part of being homeless. You got to be thirsty. You cannot be. That's part of your day. You're not homeless if you're not thirsty. It, homeless come like <laughs> but listen, think about being homeless, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. They don't make you parts just think about you got nowhere to go. Shut the fuck up. Man. <laughs> go ahead, man. Yeah. I ain't got time but, for this shit, but man. But what, what I was saying was, was <laughs> you gotta think about the time that we living in right now though. Right. Everywhere hiring. Gatorade is the every, name. Everywhere hiring. I don't care what kind of you can. Yeah. I don't care what kind of job you're looking for. It's out there for you. So and if, I, if you ask me for two dollars, you man, you. I ain't gonna I, 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 that somewhere. I, and, 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 I, and I'm not gonna so say like that. I say, a lot of times, and when I say this to be serious, a lot of times people who are homeless do suffer from mental health issues. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So it's not that they can't go work a job. They mentally cannot function. Right. But at work. the same right. time, though, I'll be thinking like, like, okay, okay. What are you doing with your check, though? Because you do get a check. Yeah. Now, but everybody don't get a check. Sometimes people manipulate it out of their check by family members and that's, others. That's and then true. they that's have, true. a lot of times, they find drugs to function with the demons in their head. Right. If you've ever done, dealt with somebody who has mental health, like in your re- real life, like family or loved one or a relationship, mm-hmm. like they really have battles within right. their head. And drugs make them, to them, they function better when they hire. Right. And that that's why I don't apply that everybody can get a job shit to people because white people have been telling us this forever. You feel me? Like when we when we want something, go get a job. But then you own the job and you're not hiring me. Right, you feel right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's there's always obstacles for people in a lot of cases. Some people could work and they just fucking lazy and that's how they landed out there. And I will say this though, um, just like what we like to talk about, when we talk about women, we go with majority. When we talk about everything, we go with majority. But a lot of people that are out there just if it's out there from poor decision making. Some people just, right. you feel me, it's un- had unfortunate events and they couldn't recover from them. But there's some people out there that just ain't shit. You know, I can remember I had a homeless dude. I, this what flipped <coughs> me off on of, um, white people, white homeless dudes too. Um, I had just moved in my place. Now, mind you, at this time, I'm not somebody with a whole lot of money, but I got a good heart. Mm. So he stumbled across the yard and he like, hey, man, can I cut your yard? You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, bet. He's like, I'll leave my lawnmower. You feel what I'm saying? I got to get gas. He had the gas can. He's like, I can't cut it unless I get gas, right? So I was like, bet. So I gave him money for gas. You know what I'm saying? He came back with the gas can, put it in the gas thing. And I was like, hey, bro, like, I'm about to, um, I was about to do something. And I was just like, I'm going to just give you your money now. Because he had already started cutting the grass. I'm going to mm-hmm. give you your money now. And you feel me? Go ahead and cut the grass. And whenever you need to cut it again, you could always come back and cut it. 
gave him twenty dollars. He asked for ten. I gave him twenty. I come back, bro. That man had left that same patch. He crunked the lawnmower up in my yard mm -hmm. and fucking never came back to finish my yard. And I seen the same motherfucker on the street begging again. You right. feel what I'm saying? I'm just you like, bro. You can't pay that nigga for he finished, man. You got to pay junkers <laughs> after the job is done. <laughs> but, man. bro, my thing is like, but when I, but if I felt like. But, but, but first of all, but, you but, tortured him. Though. But there, it's really his fault. That's torture. How? You can't give a junkie money and then expect How him to I, finish I, his yard. I didn't know he was a junkie. He was homeless. He wasn't a junkie. What would make him homeless? There's very few things that make you, you homeless. You just said it. It could be mental health issues. Which leads to you being a junkie. Not necessarily. So my, my point is this. Of the time. But my point is this, bro. If Look, He didn't get that man a, a pocket full of drug money and I got to finish his yard. That man probably was but, like, but this, yeah, but this yeah, is the yeah, same. Yeah, if, right. I, if, I, if, I, if I'm a junkie. I'm if sorry. I, hold on. Yeah, I'm sorry, hold sir. On. But if, I hold on. If I'm a junkie, right? I've been around junkies my whole life. Go give me some regular logic. No, no. If I'm a junkie and somebody secures, I've just told you, bro, you can cut this motherfucker and come get this 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 dope money every time you want it. You ever seen a heroin? But that man might have a heroin addiction, but he got to get somewhere. Bro, listen, every junkie I've ever dealt with, bro, in my life, bro, if they knew that you were a, a liable source to come get some money, they usually fuck with you pretty good. And I understand that. Maybe yeah. that's some crackheads. Yeah. But so you just go to shooting shit in your veins, brother, you got to go get that. Well, that I ain't got nothing to do with that. Something. You just fucked it up for everybody. No, just like if a, if a certain, uh, like right. when black women broke your heart enough, right. you went and tried white women. You tried me, bro. I ain't fucking with junkies no more. Right. I ain't fucking with. I ain't fucking with homeless people. No, you can't. No homeless <laughs> white man can cut my yard no more. You fucked it up for them. I didn't feel like this in the beginning. You right. feel me? Yeah, you man. made me feel that way. Mm -hmm. So fuck you and the rest of the homeless white men. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, that's yeah. that's like asking me to spend all day with Tiana Trump. She gonna give me some head tomorrow. You know how hard that day gonna be that whole day. Mm -hmm. No, I ain't all day. <laughs> but I'm just saying in my mind that that's that's to be equal. Like I'm not a junkie, but I love head, and she fired giving don. I got to spend all day with you and wait for tomorrow for that head. The whole time be like, man, we could just do that now. Like we ain't get that out of the way. Man, I'm still gonna be here. But we we'll, listen. We'll say this and we'll close out because we we'll, we'll joke all the time. But I do want to know quickly because we two hours in. You are an author, correct? Yes, sir. All right, cool. What's the process of, of getting into writing your own book? First of all, how long did it take you? And, like, what's the actual process? Are you writing it? Are you with an editor? Like, how does that work? So when I um, when I started my whole process with writing the book, I, I took I took everything that I wrote. I took notes from when I first started my business for, i say, for two years. And I took those, took every note every notebook that I had, and I, and I, and I sent it to my homeboy who got a, um, a publishing business. And he broke everything down, put it into a, a, a book form for me, right. and then we published it. I self published it though through, through, through Amazon, gotcha. and then that's what got me out there. So, did you know it was going to be a book when you were taking the notes? Was that the initial plan, or you just was doing taking the notes and then decided, oh, this could be a book? Yeah. So, so, so with me personally, I, I take notes, and I'm the type of person that if I take a note, I ain't really finna go back and look at it to be mm -hmm. honest. But I knew that I had all these notebooks. And my, my homeboy was a was a publisher, and he, mm -hmm. he he wanted to make a book. So I was like, man, you can take these, take, use these. And when he brought the finished product back to me, I was like, okay, now we got something to make some money from. Gotcha. Oh, that's that's dope, tough. That's and I will say man. this before we get out of here, man. To all my white homeboys, y'all can borrow some money. But if y'all get homeless, y'all can't get shit. You feel me? I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> if you got a dick, I ain't getting you no money any fucking way yeah, if you're yeah. homeless. You feel me? I only support homeless women. And that's just the way I am. But um, I've been spiritually guided and advised to give any homeless person I see some money. That's just the way I'm supposed to do it. So I might give you a little something. But if you're a woman, you're going to get more. You and feel if me? If you happen to watch this and you're homeless, don't drink Gatorade. You need water. You can't have an athletic drink. <laughs> and it better not be sweat. Right. Can you picture like a Gatorade commercial with a homeless nigga like quenching his thirst? Get some water. Oh, man. Water on. And don't have good shoes. Please don't have Yo, good shoes. No, that's a that's a gnarly. I wish Yeah, I don't have good shoes. And I need you to be missing the loop in your belt. Mm. Don't ever lo la lace your belt all the way through all the loops. She, you ain't gonna get no money. She preferably no belt. That would really make me. <laughs> 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 you, you, you pushing it with this belt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, and another thing too. Stop making animals homeless if you homeless. The dog oh, don't have man. to be homeless, yeah. man. I'm tired of seeing nice ass pit bulls being strapped to you. When they can definitely be adopted by somebody that's gonna feed them. Stop making animals homeless with you. I know you want companionship. <laughs> don't do it to them. Yeah, and I know a dog don't really care that you're homeless. You feel me? But he should not be eating bologna and motherfucking ham with you. He should be eating. You feel me? Pedigree. Mm -hmm. 
Because that dog might be living the best life. He might love the shit out there at Bologna. 20, but he going to get the most attention now. Yeah, absolutely. He going to get the most attention because you ain't got nothing but attention to do him. He's always outside. He get to walk his human. He probably had the best life ever. Yeah, you ain't going to walk much, though. You going to sit in that median all night. <laughs> All day you <laughs> gonna have dog sweat because you gonna sit there, goddamn. You ain't doing too much walking. Dogs love boxes. Yeah, mm. and don't let me see your bike either. No, your, yeah, your no. bike, your bike can't have all the air in the tires. I ain't gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, we just giving y'all money. Mm-hmm. I, we giving y'all strategies on how to get this bread if y'all really want this bread. Yeah, shit, no. And and people like I just like Atlanta is the worst, bro. I was I'm gonna give you a quick story before we close out. <clears throat> They, they got this scam that they run. I was going outside Phillips Arena. If you ever been to a basketball game mm-hmm. there or a football game, these motherfuckers come out and make their whole families homeless. It be kids, women, and she be the only yes, one with a trench yes, coat on. Yes, the kids yes. be cold and they be huddled yeah. up together. Absolutely. Like, this is a hustle. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You can tell it's a hustle. Mm-hmm. You feel me? These people make thousands and thousands of dollars off of these people's pity out there. The people from the city know better. Right. But you got a lot of people that are coming and traveling the game. And it's just like that shit is so fucked up because there's people out here really in need. You feel what I'm saying? And you out here running game. But that is a big fucking hustle, bro. It's my first time I fell for it. I gave them $20. You feel what I'm saying? And the kids got fucking the script down pat. The adults don't talk. They let the kids do their thing. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just like, bro, this shit wild as fuck, bro. But, yeah, stop doing that shit, man. Y'all, y'all fucking it up for everybody, man. There's people out here that really need help. And y'all fucking put it on people's spirit to not want to help. Because y'all with the fuck shit. Oh, man. But, yeah, close us out, man. We this. This was a long, but it was a good one. No, absolutely, man. I love how we can just come in here and kick it and talk, man, even with no specific topic. But uh, as usual, man, thank you for coming, man. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate y'all, fam. I'm inspired by the beard. I might give it a shot. I got a little going on. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. He got the but, kind uh, you'll grow, too, though. I don't know. He's connect good. I just, I don't know. Like, And then mine don't do this like here. Like, my, I got all That's stuff. the beauty of it, though. You don't want nah. that. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want all that. Nah, I want this up. to connect right here. I, I want my, my shit out, bro. Like, I was looking at old videos of me talking with yeah. a beard and I was like bro what the fuck was I doing like y'all let me do this shit mm-hmm. got like good. I gotta you supposed to clean this shit out up in here man y'all my shit was like all over thing. my mouth bro I'm <laughs> like got good eating beard, beard bro yeah, like, I got good beard hair though. I got like back hair on my face it don't make sense <laughs> back hair. it's like the thin shit you know? my shit didn't connect for years bro in high school I was I was doing everything yeah. I could to make that connect this part right here yeah. is the hardest That's part the to hard get connected yeah. Yeah. if I can get that I'll let it ride you just gotta let it ride bro well we'll see man maybe uh Get some of this anxiety issue podcast money. I'll give it a shot. But as always, man, we thank y'all for tuning in. We thank you for coming, bro. You're welcome back anytime. I know I took a lot of good information from you, especially about being an entrepreneur. It it fits where I'm at in my life wholeheartedly. So hopefully help somebody else out like you helped me out, bro. So I really appreciate that, man. Yeah, I appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. And thank y'all for tuning in to Anxiety Issues Podcast. I'm Adam 12 Taylor here with my brother Boneface of Boneface Inc. Tune in next week.